Hey guys, good morning. Let me set up this room real quick and then we can get started. We got about six minutes till market open, so I gotta speed this up a bit. Let's see, today's July 7th. Start up right here. While it's loading, let me go ahead and send you guys a link here in the premium for the Zoom. There you go. Set up over here real quick. All right, cool. People are making their way into the room right now. So I'll keep um, admitting everybody into the room. Uh, once we do that, we'll take a look at uh, the charts. So I'm just going to let everybody into the room first before we um, we start analyzing anything so people don't miss anything. Uh, we have about four minutes till market open. So we we are in a crunch, but we're not too, uh, we don't have too much to look at anyways. So I think everything else looks pretty solid. Let me go ahead and send out the uh, the uh, link for the live session as well. So let me switch this one over here. Let's see. All right, there we go. Got that sent out. There, last few places, the public rooms. All right, and then the industry room. I think that's it. All right, cool, so the link's all posted up. So I think we're pretty much good to, uh, good to go. So everyone's still making their way into the room. We have about three minutes till market open. Uh, once market opens, we can start looking for a trade here. So looking at US 30, it looks like we have a sell bias here on the 10 minute reason for that is because price is below the pivots. Uh, the trend meter is also red. Uh, looking over at the three minute, same situation, price is below the pivots and the trend meter is red. And lastly, for the one minute over here, same situation, price is well, slightly swinging up, but um, prior to this, it was below the trend meter. So we'll see what happens from here when the market opens. But I mean, for the most part, everything looks sort of bearish uh, on this end. Looking at the one hour as well, it's also bearish. So we'll, we're probably going to be looking for a possible sell here. But, um, you know, we'd have to confirm once the market actually opens. You can see right here, the uh, fundamentals aren't open yet. So once the market is open, we can determine, you know, which direction price will be going. So we'll be waiting for that. But on the technical side, it looks like it's for the most part a, um, a possible sell. So we got about a minute and 40 seconds till market opens. Once that happens, we can determine, you know, which direction we're going to be taking. So let me just go ahead over here real quick and see who's in here. Nice, nice. People are still making their way in. Hey, morning, Patricia. Morning, Miles. Morning, Dave. Morning, Martin. Morning, Delmas. Morning, Bedrin. Morning, Tommy. Uh, let's see who's over here. Morning, Peter. Morning, Kenny. Morning, Short C. Morning, Nia. Nia, I got your email, so I'm going to uh, respond to you after the session. Uh, and unlock your access to everything. So just keep that in mind. All right, guys. So everything looks pretty solid for the most part here. Um, let me get this over here real quick. Hey, morning, Ken. Morning, Matt. Morning, Albert. All right. We got about 50 seconds till market open. Um, right here, we're looking for a possible sell. What we're going to need to see is we're going to need a sell signal. So um, in order for us to take this sell right here, we want to confirm the sell bias on the fundamentals, but also uh, looking here on the one minute chart, we would also need this to close below the pivots with a red sell signal. Once that closes below the pivots with the red sell signal, that'll confirm the sell. And then we can take this for a sell. 
if not, um, and it swings to the upside and it's a strong bullish candle, then that might shift for a, a buy instead. So we'll be uh, looking out for this, but you know, we're going to be a little patient and we're going to, um, we're going to wait for the confirmation before we take it. Hey, morning, Maddie. Morning, Mark. Morning, everybody. All right. So market's opening right now in about five seconds. Uh, we'll be making a move right here. Okay, so this is the first opening candle right here. If this closes with a strong bullish candle, then this technically would be a buy. Um, yeah, I mean, technically would be a buy. Let's look at the fundamentals over here real quick. Uh, looks like it is, it's right down the middle. So it's at about negative five right now, but it is shooting up. So we'll see what happens from here. Uh, everything is kind of, choppy right now not just the uh, us 30 market but also the um you know also the forest market as well so we got about 20 seconds left on here we're looking for a possible sell but we need this to close below here with a uh with a sell signal if it doesn't close below there there's not going to be a sell um available so you see this huge wick right here that's just indicating it's going to shoot back down so we're going to wait for this uh we'll probably wait like the first couple of minutes for the breakout let me see if there's news today. I know I think there is news today. So there is news at seven o'clock. So we'll be looking out for that as well. But all right, so right here, there's no confirmation yet. Looking over here at the fundamentals, it is currently, I mean, it's not nowhere. It's, it's like right down the middle. It hasn't really moved in any direction. It's kind of uh, spread out. So there's no, there's no bias here on the fundamental side. It's just right down the middle. It just keeps going from green to red. It's like around zero, zero points. Um, but looking at this right here, see how this is coming down? This is exactly what we were looking for. So we need this to close below here with the sell signal. If it closes below there with the sell signal, then it would confirm the, um, the, uh, the bearish bias. So we're still looking for this to close here. No confirmation yet. Still no confirmation. Let's see this real quick. All right, looking over here on the fundamental side, let's see if it pushed anywhere. Uh, it's still pretty red for the most part right now, but um, yeah, there isn't really a big confirmation here. If this closes with a strong bullish candle, meaning there's not a big top wick then this would technically be a buy for the breakout but if that happens i'm probably not going to take it just keep that in mind because um we're getting we're getting late into the breakout phase uh and there just there just wasn't wasn't really much of a breakout right if you look right here this was opening candle the range from right here from when market opened till currently it hasn't really moved very much so very, not very much confirmation at all but this would technically be a uh, if this closes with a small wick up there or no wick at all, then it's gonna be a buy. Okay, so it, it's it's a possible buy right here. I'm not gonna take it. If you guys wanna take it, you know, you feel free, but I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna take it myself. It's just too risky of a trade. So I'm not gonna take this, but this would technically be the breakout if you guys wanted to, to take it here. I mean, I'll just hop in for like the last push. It's too late already. I'm gonna go in for a smaller lot size, just a small one. Just try to push that up there. All right, so I'm currently in profit already 500. Uh, let me see this. I'll close out soon. All right, I made about a thousand off that trade right here. Um, it was a quick move, guys, in and out. Uh, I, I don't feel comfortable with it, so I'm already out of it. If you guys want to hold on to it, feel free, um, but I'm not going to hold on to it. So it's just too risky of a trade for me to want to hold on to. I made my I made my profit off of that, so pretty solid. <sighs> yeah, let's see. There you go, full TP. So there's a breakout right there. You guys confirm that it just hit. Uh, let me just give you guys a little update over here. So yeah, for whoever caught it for the full move, you know, big congrats to you. I didn't hold it for the full move. I caught it. There you go. Your horns. <laughs> so there's a breakout right there. 
to that confirmation. Uh, you know, obviously you guys can see that I know what I'm doing when I'm taking these breakouts, you know, I'm looking at certain things. I waited for those confirmations and it hit full TP. So uh, I can big congrats to everybody who took it. I took it for a half profit. Um, and I'll give you guys a little update here in the group. There you go. <laughs> Still shooting up. Yeah, so definitely a big congrats to whoever caught that breakout right there. It uh, shot up heavy. And then I'll send you guys my uh, profits here as well. So if you guys have profits and you guys want to send over, uh, feel free. Nice work, Seasook. I just saw your profits right now. Seasook locked in a total of 776 on one account and then 1,288 on one account. So um, I actually just opened a funding talent account because I'm already maxed out on, on FTMO. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trading like, I have 100K on uh, a challenge on funding talent. I also have uh, a 200, two 200Ks on FTMO. So uh, Tavon over here, nice thousand bucks, Tavon. So a lot of you guys did take it with me right here. Big congrats to you guys for whoever caught it. Uh, I'll be sending you guys my profits as well. So let me just get you guys my profits right here. So, you know, you guys got to be you guys gotta on your feet. You guys have to understand the strategy. If you guys don't understand it, you're going to miss out on trades. So let me just give you guys a screenshot of this. A screenshot of my accounts here. Money talent. <laughs> I also started trading my, uh, my personal account too. Wait, what? Oh, it's loading. Okay. Oh, that's so whack. It didn't. Hmm. I didn't take it on my other FTMO. That's... Yeah, trade not executed on FTMO. Yeah, that sucks. It moved too fast. So it executed on my uh, on one of my FTMOs. It executed on one of my funding talents. It didn't execute on my personal, and it also didn't execute on my on my other FTMO. Well, that's whack. Well, it's all good, whatever. I still got it on two accounts. So let me go ahead and um, it, that's what happens with the, with the copier sometimes, guys. So I'm probably gonna merge my uh, my FTMOs at some point because it just gets annoying when that happens where it just moves too, um, too fast. So I'll just send you guys this right here. So here we go. Uh, on my new funding talent that I just opened up, 100K account right there, I made about 500 right there. And then for my FTMO over here, I made about uh, 1,000 or 800, I guess. So a, thousand, a little bit over a thousand in total, about 1200. So, I mean, it did okay. We'll be looking for some scalps now. So let me just go ahead and turn this on, delete these. Yeah, that's the problem with the copier sometimes, guys. It rarely happens, but sometimes if the market's moving too fast, it won't be able to, uh, to fill up my position. I should have just held on to it to full TP. It would have filled it, but unfortunately, um, you know, shit happens. So nice profit. All right, solid. And that thing is still shooting up pretty heavily. So as long as you guys understand the strategy and you guys know what you're doing, um, you know, you can easily take trades like this every morning with us because we do this at, the same thing every morning. Nice work, Patrick. Patrick locked in about 890. So yeah, solid profits amongst everyone here, whoever took the trade. Um, that sucks. It, it missed, the copier missed on two of my accounts. So I, I technically could, should have had double the profit, but unfortunately I don't. So it's all good. Oh, and also the funding talent's a half account too. So it's not a... Uh, it doesn't get the full amount of profits. That's why it's only half profit because it's a 100K account. Uh, my um, my FTMO is a 200K account. So that's why it's a little, it's a bit different. Yeah, well, that sucks. It's all good. Morning, Gak. Good morning, Joseph. Morning, Gary. Morning, everybody. Morning, Sam. Morning, Mark. All right, guys. So let's start looking for some scalps. So the breakout entry is done. We're done with this. Uh, now we're just going to be looking for a... Uh, possible scalp here. So looking here on the three minute, what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for a tracement and I'll catch the move back up. Same here on the 10 minute. Um, I'm looking for a possible uh, snipe entry, but there's no snipes right now. Let me go ahead and update the zones real quick. All right, so we got a zone. 
right here. We'll just move this down right here. We got another zone right here. We got another one right there. Another one right here. We got one down here. And we got another one right here. All right, cool. So I'm gonna turn on the uh, pivots right here. And it looks like we have no entries right now. No entries off the 10 minute, uh, 30 minute right here. We're still waiting for that retracement. Once we get the retracement, we can possibly look for a buy. Uh, lastly, here on the one minute, same thing. We're looking for a retracement here and then catch it as it swings up from here. So just one trade for the day so far uh, and, and a hit full TP. So we'll be looking for the uh, next one. Uh, let's see, Peter is asking, was there any positive news uh, that's pushing US 30 up or just manipulation? It's, I mean, for the most part, it's just manipulation. There's no, there's no news. I gotta mute this. Man, I, I like, I got this new Apple Watch. I don't know how to use it. But every time people message me, I get these little notifications. I wanna mute this thing. All right, whatever, I'll try to figure it out. Um, but yeah, there's no news this morning, Peter. Uh, looking over here, we have news coming up at seven, but there's no news right now. So, I mean, the, the Fed's speaking today, so just keep that in mind. At 11, the Fed's speaking, so there is going to be a lot of manipulation today. Uh, also, it's like, you know, we're still in a holiday week. Uh, we're coming back off a holiday week, and the market usually moves like this. It moves kind of funky. So just keep that in mind as well. Um, I'm probably not going to take any more trades on the one minute. I'll be looking on the three minute for a, a more solid entry. But yeah, for the most part, this is just how the market moves coming back from a uh, from a holiday weekend. It's just a lot of volatility in the market. Um, obviously, it spikes around a lot. Uh, no way, not a retracement to the pivot. Um, the the videos on the on the website. We're using the the pivot strategy, so we're just looking. Man, I'm trying to figure out how to. Let me see if I can do this real quick. Sorry, guys. It's getting kind of annoying because every time I, someone messages me, I get a bunch of uh, my, my, my watches keeps ringing. Let me see if I can turn off my notifications on my phone. Um, should I turn the off? Okay, sounds selling mode. All right, cool. And yeah, I don't know how to use this stuff. All right, cool. Anyways, I'm back, guys. Um, looking at this here on the uh, so here's a big retracement. See, this is why we exit the trade right away because if you hold on to it, you get caught in a lot of these whipsaws where it comes down super heavily. This is perfectly fine. We want this to, to come down like this because we want the candle to uh, provide a retracement and then we catch the buy as it swings back up. Um, but no, Wayne, going back to your question, because Wayne's asking or trace the pivot. Um, I mean, you got to go and get refreshed on the strategies, Wayne. Uh, I don't think you you know what we're replying here. But yeah, if you go on the website, I mean, you got to sign up for the strategies though, to, to learn the strategy here. But if you uh, sign up for the strategies, you'll see, or I mean, it's posted in the free groups too. Wayne, if you want to go and look at any of the things here, just go to the free chat or the alerts page and just search uh, uh, refresh. And then you'll see the strategy right here. So if you want to go find these strategies, I mean, it's, it's all explained on, or go back and watch all the live sessions. So when, I don't know if you've, if you've been gone for a long time. I, I, it seems like you have, because you're not familiar with the strategies here. Um, you might want to go back and just watch all the live streams for like the past year or so, because we've been applying the same strategy every morning, um, both scalps and for the breakout. So just keep that in mind. Uh, Paul said made 700 so far, just waiting patiently now. Nice work, Paul. Yeah. Now, same here. I made about a, a thousand right now so far. Uh, so I don't know. Add this up. So I made 465, and two of my accounts didn't execute the trades, unfortunately. But if you add these up right here, 755. So I'm up about 1,220 right now. I'm just chilling. I'm waiting for the next entry. So see this is how it's coming down. Actually, we might be able to take the one minute. So let me just get this ready over here for 
as the one minute if this swings up. Because I was looking for it on the three minute, but we didn't get that signal in the opposite direction yet. But anyways, going back over here, Albert locked in a total of 50 bucks on this account and then 41 bucks on this account right here. So nice work, Albert. It looks like you had a couple losses there. You know, it happens sometimes, but uh, all in all, if you're in profit, that's all that really matters here. Uh, looking over here at Abraham. So Abraham's up 175. Nice work, Abraham. So great profit right there off of US 30, a GJEC, EU, and gold. Lastly, Miles over here, total of 500, about 500 uh, for the day. Nice work, Miles. So everyone here locked in some pretty solid profits off that breakout entry. If you guys have more profits, go ahead and send them over. Otherwise, we'll, uh, you know, otherwise we will take this for a uh, another scalp right here. So let me just scroll up real quick. Uh, here, let me scroll up. Nice, Enzo. So Enzo caught the, caught the move too. So yeah, definitely great work with Enzo here. Enzo said he missed the entry, but he just got in. So it looks like he probably locked in some profit there as well. So nice work, Enzo, and whoever else caught that. Um, Joseph said, question, which trade copier works best? I use social trader tools. Um, I don't really have many issues with them. Today was like one of the issues that I had uh, in a really long time. So what I recommend is, uh, social trader tools. That's what, that's the only copier I use. I've been using them for over a year now. Um, and it only misses trades sometimes like probably like once every couple of months, if the volatility is too high. So I would just go with social trader tools. Um, I don't have a need to go anywhere else. You know, sometimes there's issues, but there's issues with everything. So I would just go with that. Uh, Bisho, no, there's no buy right now. Bisho is asking, hello, sir, should I take buy now? Uh, no, there's no buy yet. You have to wait for the confirmation. If this closes with this bullish buy signal right here, then yeah, you can take the buy, but it hasn't closed yet. So you need to wait for it to close for that confirmation because it hasn't confirmed yet. Once it confirms, you can take it for a quick little move, um, but you gotta be quick. So if you're on the YouTube only, you guys are probably gonna miss this move because the one minute was way too fast. We're only in it for a few seconds. All right, no entry there. It's now still pending. Uh, let me scroll up real quick. Uh, Kenny said the breakout that breakout strategy is deadly. Got to learn it. Yeah, definitely, Kenny. I mean, this is this is mainly where I make most of my profit. I just trade like one or three times a day, guys. I trade from six to eight. I take the breakout entry. I take maybe one or two scalps if they're available. And then I call it a day. And that's how I lock in all my profits every single day, right? So you guys have seen my profits every day. Uh, you know, I'm fully transparent with you guys with all the trades I take, uh, you know, like right here. I made about 500 and I made about another 500 right there. This is from Monday, which was a holiday. Um, and you guys can see, I only take a few trades, right? One, two, three trades. One, two, three trades right there. Um, again, over here, see on Friday on Friday as well. I see it. You guys can see here. I only take a few, like very few trades. I take about one, two, three trades, one, two, three trades right here. And that's, this is like the breakout entry and then a scalp right after. And I lock in about a thousand, you know, per account, thousand, two thousand per account, if not more, if it's a busy day. Uh, and this is like all my trades for the week, right? For the week, no losses, about 15,000 for the week. And this is just one account. Keep in mind, I have two FTMO accounts and then I have one funding talent that's running right now. And I started trading my personal account again as well. So I have like four accounts running on my copier. Um, and that's all I take. I just take the breakout entry. It's like one trade. You could usually tell which one's a breakout entry too. It's the one with the big profit, right? It's one that's like over a thousand. So that's like the breakout entry. The rest are small scalps in between. So I take about one or three trades a day. That's it. Call it a day. And then I do the same thing the next day. I just re, you know, I just, uh, I just recycle the move every single day. Uh, EW over here locked in a total of a little over a thousand, or yeah, thousand five hundred. It looks like so nice work, EW. So as you guys can see here, everyone's locking in some pretty massive profits. Uh, if you guys want to apply the strategy yourself, like you can see, I only took one trade today, but EW over here took about one, two, three, four trades. If you guys want to apply the strategy on your own, just go on the website k2trades.com click on k2 strategy course right here and then this is where you'll get access to all of the k2 indicators and the k2 strategy so that you guys can apply it on your own um because obviously if you guys know the strategy you can apply it all day long and you guys can lock in more profits 
uh, Miles here as well. So Miles locked in another one. So nice work, Miles. Miles is now up 567. He was up 446. Now he's up 567 for the day. Great work, Miles. Uh, Brittany as well. So Brittany right here, this is EW sister. Their sister's right here. She locked in a total of 1,295. So like I mentioned, if you guys know the strategy, you guys can trade it all day long. I only took one trade today, but uh, Brittany took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 trades. And she locked in more profit than me because she took more trades, right? So, um, you know, the opportunity is there for you guys. If you guys want to take it, go ahead and take it. If not, that's fine. We'll still keep trading the way that we do here. Uh, Isaac over here locked in 622 for the day. Nice work, Isaac. And he took a couple trades as well. So Isaac took one and it looks like he's on a smaller account. So he's on a smaller account. And he took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 trades, all wins. Uh, and they add up to 622. So nice work, Isaac, off that. Uh, if you guys have any other, any more profits you guys want to send over, feel free. Um, and then I can um, add them to the list for our daily profits for the day. So this is fine right here on the three minute. We still want this retracement down. This is actually perfect. I'd rather trade on the three minute than the one minute because there's a lot of noise on the um, on the one minute. So we got 14 seconds left on this candle. Once this closes right here, this is perfectly fine. We'll catch it as it swings back up. Uh, there we go. So we didn't close right there. It's still pending. So we'll have to... Um, you know, we'll just have to wait and see where it goes from here. I'll just set up the TP stop loss um, just in case, though. All right, nice. So, yeah, if you guys have more profits, you know, go ahead and send them in, and then I'll add them to the list for uh, today's daily profits. But so far today, you guys have locked in some pretty nice profits overall for the whole team here. Uh, let's see. Stanley said lost access this morning. YouTube delayed, so I... Took a sell thinking we were selling, lost 1K. Damn, Stanley. Yeah, that's the, it's, it's a big difference, guys. If you guys are not on the Zoom, uh, it's going to be hard for you guys to catch these scalps because there's a delay there. Uh, you guys are hearing me maybe 10 to 20 seconds late from what I'm saying. So, like, by the time we enter a trade and we exit, uh, you guys are still, you know, waiting for that move there. So, uh, what I do recommend is if you guys want to have uh, the most opportunity, um, and if you guys don't want to learn the strategy, at least get access to the Zoom so that you guys can have real-time access to my trades. Uh, but I mean, that's it's unfortunate, Stanley. <laughs> it, you, you can tell that it's a, it's a pretty big difference, right? When you go from uh, from the Zoom to the uh, from the Zoom to the um, the YouTube. Let me just scroll over here real quick. Uh, Washington Crypto said uh, FX Blue is great. Yeah, I've heard of FX Blue too. I've never used them myself, but I, I heard they're good as well. I think you need an actual PC for that. I trade on a Mac, so I couldn't use it when I went like before I found out about it. Um, so now I just use Social Trader Tool since it's on the cloud. Nice, Joseph. Yeah, no problem, Joseph. Uh, Enzo's asking if there's a green line indicator and the candle closes bullish, does that mean it's a buy? Yeah, exactly, Enzo. So you can see right here. So I mean, it doesn't mean it's a buy, but it just means it's a bullish signal. So like, for example, right here, uh, this is a green uh, signal over here with the green candle within it. This is indicating a momentum swing upwards, right? So if you see that right there, see this big momentum swing up, that's what's that's the indication. It doesn't necessarily mean a buy. You'd have to match it with the other requirements in order to take the buy. But this would just show that it's a bullish momentum, right? Like right here, we have a bullish candle a green bullish candle within the green signal, right? With that said, look how far it pushed up. If you took that trade right there, and this is applying a certain strategy, this is applying the pivot strategy. If you took this trade right here, full TP, right there for about 250 pips. Same situation right here for this red signal. It's a red sell signal with the red bearish candle, right? This is a official, or not official, I'd say it's a, moment, a valid momentum signal. See how it swings down here? There you go for another entry right there. And the reason for this is because we're applying a specific strategy. Uh, the strategy that we're applying for this here is going to be the, here, I'll just show you real quick. This would be a lot easier for me to just show you what we're applying so you understand, you know, when we're buying, when we're selling. We're not just buying and selling at random times. This is the, this is the, um, this is going to be the K2 US 33 minute pivot scalp. So for one, you want to confirm a valid K2 momentum signal. That's exactly what we just looked at, right? For 2A, you want to confirm price is breaking and closing past K2 pivots 
looking for. Or if that doesn't happen, to be confirm price is below or above for a buy, above pivots for a buy, or below for a sell. So looking at this right here, you know what I just discussed, we don't just take it just because we have a valid signal. We make sure that all the requirements are met. So like looking at this right here, you can see that we have a valid buy signal. So right here, confirm a valid K2 momentum signal, momentum signal for a buy right there, right? A bullish momentum signal. Second, you want to confirm prices breaking and closing past K2 pivots three and four right here. It's breaking, it's breaking closing past this orange and red line, which are the pivots. You enter long position right there. Um, TP stop loss is at 25.50 for the three minute. This is just three minutes, so just keep that in mind. Right there, TP stop loss set, you let it run. There you go, full TP, right? And then again, right here, same situation. You don't just enter because you have a valid momentum, you enter because all the requirements are met. Same situation right here, confirm a valid K2 momentum signal. Here's a momentum sell signal right here uh, because it's a red signal with a red candle within it. And it's also uh, pushing below the pivot. So requirement number one is met, requirement number two is also met because price is breaking and closing past the same pivots right here. With that said, you enter a short position same parameters, 25.50. Let that run straight to full TP, no drawdown. So that's when we look for an entry. Uh, right here, we don't have an entry currently because um, like right here, this right here wouldn't be an entry. It'd be a momentum sell signal, but no entry. Reason for that is because it hasn't met the second requirements. Uh, you need to confirm that this candle right here is actually breaking and closing past these can the past these pivots, it's not breaking closing past it, right? So 2A doesn't qualify for um, 2B, you wanna confirm prices below for a sell, it's not below the pivots, right? So there's no entry there. Even though this would have hit, it would have been a risky trade, right? Um, yeah, so it would have hit TP if you took a trade there, but it's not a valid entry, so I wouldn't have taken it. You guys gotta be patient and wait for actual entries uh, rather than just hopping into trades right away. So nothing here on the three minute, uh, same situation right here. It's the same strategy for the one minute. The only difference is that it's on the one minute time frame. So parameters are different. For here, it's 2550. For here, it's uh, 1030. So that's pretty much what we're waiting for. Uh, right here, now price is below the pivots. What we're looking for is for it to swing back up. Once it swings back up and closes above this area, we can take that buy. Same with the three minute right here. We're looking for a possible momentum signal upwards. If that fails uh, a buy signal, then this is going to qualify for requirement number one and requirement number two because it would be above it, uh, uh, above the pivots with a buy signal. So that's uh, just confirmation of like how the strategy works here. Anyways, going back to uh, the uh, the Dow over here, let's see where the bias is right now. The bias is uh, it, there's no bias right now, right? It's only up ten points. If it's up 100 points and it's a bias for a buy, if it's down 100 points, it's a bias for a sell. But right now, there's no bias. It's right down the middle. Looking at the futures data over here, the futures data is up 89 points. So it looks pretty bullish to me. Uh, and lastly, looking over here at the um, at the retail traders, there's 56% of retail traders that are short, which is perfectly fine because we want to trade opposite of them, right? Market makers and institutions trade opposite retail traders. That's why most retail traders fail at trading because price generally gets manipulated against them. So looking at this right here, we're, we're probably going to be better off taking buys and sells because if majority of retail traders are short, you know, you want to trade where everybody else is trading. You want to trade where, where price is going and price is going wherever the uh, market makers and institutions want to push it. So we're, uh, oh, thanks Roman. Yeah, thanks for, for reminding me, bro. I, I totally forgot. There's news coming up in two minutes. So we got IVPMI, Joel's job openings. Um, so they're going to release in about two minutes how many jobs are open here in California, right? There's a ton of jobs that are open right now. So uh, previously, there were 9.29 million jobs available. They're forecasting there to be more jobs available. The problem here in the US are a lot of people are lazy, right? A lot of people just want to get that unemployment and they don't want to go and go to work, even though there's like 9.3 million jobs in the world right now, in, in the U.S., just the U.S., not even the world. Um, so uh, I don't know if that's good or bad for the economy, but I mean, it's going to affect the market one way or the other. So we'll see what happens here when uh, when the market opens. I mean, not the when the market opens, when the, uh, the news is released. 
<laughs> exactly. Miles Miles said, why work when you can trade? Exactly right. It's why I quit my job. Uh, I don't know, was it a year or two years ago? I was an attorney before this and you know, this is way easier. I just trade for two hours a day instead of dealing with, uh, with legal stuff <laughs> pretty much 24 hours a day. All right, anyway, so uh, looking at this over here, we're still looking for this uh, news to pass. News is coming in about five seconds. Hey, Michelle. Nice, Michelle's first day here. Rookie, my first day, nervous. Yeah, no, definitely, Michelle, it'll be fun. Uh, just stay consistent. I recommend you learn the strategy so that you know what we're actually doing here um, rather than just you know following trades blindly. So welcome to K2. Should be fun <laughs> while, while you're here. All right, uh, the news just happened right now. Let's see where it's at. Cody's here too. Hey, Cody. It's your brother, Kaya. All right, anyways, looking at the calendar right here, um, it was actually negative. So there's less job openings right now. Not sure if uh, they just took job, like if they just took down the hiring or they actually hired people, like people actually went and got jobs. So um, there's less jobs available. I mean, it's not that much. It, it was previously 9.29 million jobs available. Now it's 9.21 jobs available. So, you know, I don't know how that'll affect the market. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see what happens from here. We'll see how the, uh, the market reacts to it. Because if there's less jobs, I mean, it can mean one of two things. It can mean one, uh, businesses are closing down, so there's no jobs or businesses are just not hiring. Or two, people are actually taking the jobs and it's good for the economy because it's stimulating the economy with, uh, with growth, right? So we'll see, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens from here. We just gotta wait and confirm for a movement here, but it looks like it's gonna be bullish. So if we get a buy signal here on the three minute, we can take it. Um, until then, we're just gonna be waiting for it. All right, so we do have a buy signal here on the one minute, but it's not breaking or closing above the pivots. So there's, I mean, there's technically no entry available just yet. All right, cool. Hey, Acker, morning. Morning, Lisa. Acker is asking, when will the shares rise and reach their maximum price? Um, what are you referring to, Acker? I'm not sure what you're, uh, what you're asking about. Uh, which shares? Are you talking about the Dow 30? which are the futures or the Dow 30 stock index, or I don't know. I'm not sure what you're referring to about shares. Because the Dow just moves up by points. I mean, the Dow always goes up. So I don't know what you necessarily mean by maximum price. That There's no maximum price for the Dow. It's just going to keep going up. Um, anyways, looking here on the one minute, we have a pending buy signal right there. We also have a pending buy on the three minute. So we're looking for this to confirm so that we can take this uh, this buy over here. Uh, okay, let me see, Paul said, I think the one minute is making a wedge, falling wedge trend continuation. I can see that on the one minute over here. Yeah, I can see that over here too, Paul. Yeah, it's kind of messy, but, but I mean, I guess it does a job, right? Yeah, so I mean, if price breaks above here at some point, uh, we could probably see it shoot up, but who knows? Sorry, I had a sneeze. All right, so um, yeah, looking at this right here, I mean, I can see that coming, Paul. It's just, uh, I still think it's gonna be bullish overall. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. The reason for that is because the futures is, is, is up. I mean, it's not up heavily, but it's up like 52 points right now. Also, the retail traders are down or they're short right now. They're starting to shift. You can see here, it was like 58%. It was like 60%, 58%, 56, not 54. So you can see right here, um, as the retail traders start to shift, this is because uh, one of two things can happen. They're either getting stopped out or they're getting scared and pulling out of their short positions because they think price is going to go up. So we'll have to wait and see what happens from here. But um, I mean, if it starts to shift to the other direction, the bias might change to a sell. So I mean, a lot of things here can uh, can happen. Also, short scene, thanks for confirming that. He said long wick on the one hour. So looking here on the one hour, uh, there's a huge wick right there off the top, right? So if that huge wick plays out right there, what could happen is you know possible reversal. But um, 
I mean, we'll just have to wait and see what happens from here. This is why we don't just hop into trades right away, guys. We we actually wait for a confirmation before we take any trades because if you guys hop into trades right away without thinking, uh, you can get caught in a bad position. So just keep that in mind. Um, anyways, looking at everything here, everything looks solid for the most part. Um, if it drops down to a sell, that's completely fine. We, we change our bias, right? We're not looking for a buy anymore. Um, but until then, you know, we'll just keep looking at what the market is giving us. So I'm going to close this right here. And then we'll just see what happens from here. You know, biases can change all throughout the day. You guys shouldn't be focused on just one way of trading the entire day. If the bias changes, you got to shift with it. Uh, you know, market conditions are always changing all throughout the day, especially during New York, because this is uh, the most volatile time for US 30. So let me see this real quick. <laughs> Roman said we don't want to work either. So Roman, uh, I think you're from uh, Canada, right? I'm assuming you're from Canada. So uh, if you're from Canada, yeah, it seems like nobody wants to uh, wants to work right now. Uh, yeah, Michelle, there is a training course. If you go on the website, so if you go over to the website, k2trades.com, if you want to have access to all the strategies and have access to all the K2 indicators that we're applying right here, just click on K2 strategy course right here, and then you can have access to it. That's how you'll have access to everything here and how you'll be able to uh, take multiple trades like everyone else here. So you can see like Isaac, I mentioned he took like 12 trades here. Brittany took about like 12, 13 trades here. Um, EW took about three trades. I only took one trade today. So I took one trade today. These are uh, my profits for the day you know, of about 1,200 total. Um, but everyone else here has slightly more profit than me, right? Like, um, let me see who has more profit than me. Like Brittany. Brittany's a little bit higher than me. She has about 1,295 because she took more trades, right? If you want to take more trades, you can do that um, if you have access to the indicators. But me personally, you know, I'm very careful. I only like to take one or three trades a day, and most of the time they all hit. So that's why I'm um, I'm a little more risk averse with regard to taking these trades. Nice. <laughs> yeah, Roman City's from Vancouver. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of my Canadian friends out there too. I mean, you guys are still in lockdown, right? Or you guys are in some sort of uh, temporary lockdown. So I don't think they're really working there either. Or they're not traveling or doing anything like anything normal yet. So let's see, another question over here is from <laughs> Miles said, I'd be going full retard if I ever decided to go work for someone again. No, exactly, Miles. Same here. Uh, Roman said, my legs are jello from yesterday. The walking to work would kill me. Oh, so it looks like you do have work out there. Horrible. <laughs> the thought of walking to work would kill me right now. Yeah, no, exactly. Abraham is asking, uh, FOMC would have an impact on US 32. Yeah, exactly. So we have news coming up today at um, at 11. This is high impact news for the day, guys. It's the uh, FOMC meeting minutes. The meeting is actually happening, happening before. So this is why the market's kind of slow right now. The reason for it being slow is that people are sitting out the market while, uh, while this meeting is going on. If you guys aren't familiar with FOMC, this is basically the Fed. It's like the, the U.S. economy, the U.S. Treasury. They're talking about the U.S. economy right now. So, you know, obviously, whatever they talk about here will directly affect U.S. 30. Um, and that's kind of why the market's kind of slow, right? Normally, the market's moving very fast, like how it's moving right here. But the reason why the market's not moving is because they're having the Fed meeting right now. The Fed meetings, uh, since they're releasing the, the notes or the, the minutes at 11, the meeting's probably going on from like 10 to, or no, it's probably going on from like 9 probably from between eight to 11, because uh, they have to finish the meeting before they release the minutes. Minutes just means the notes from their meeting. So they're basically going over the US economy. This happens uh, one week out of every month. You can see here all the heavy news. And then at 1230, the Fed member is gonna speak about what they discussed there. So the, the minutes are gonna come out here. Once this comes out, people are gonna decipher the news. They're gonna try to bet whether the economy is gonna be good or it's gonna be bad. Um, but right now people are just sitting out the market because they're waiting for that news to come out. Because when that news does come out, um, right here at 11, let me just mark it up for you. Or you can't even see it over here. Anyways, when the news comes out here at 11, when they release the notes from the meeting, you'll see a spike in price in either direction. So people are going to start betting once it gets down to that point. People will bet up, people will bet down, and then market will be manipulated. So generally, um, this is why I stopped trading around 8 o'clock, because when the news re is released, you really don't know where price is going to go, right? You're basically just taking a gamble. So in a lot of situations, 
it's better for you not to trade during news than to, you know, risk it for like a, like a little profit. Um, you know, it, it's not a sustainable way to trade because you can get lucky every so often trading news, but once you have that big loss and only there goes your account. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, exactly. Short scenes, short scenes mentioned, uh, real traders never be on one side always. They make money from both long and short. Exactly, short scene. You know, that's why we always shift. If the bias shifts, we move with the market, right? We're always, the market's always evolving and we're ready to uh, to take profits, you know, wherever it goes. So looking at this right here, we still don't have a confirmation for any of these entries. We have a pending buy here on the one minute, but it hasn't really, um, it hasn't closed above. We need it to close above this area right here. If this doesn't, um, so it might close above it. If it does close above it, there might be a buy entry, but I don't think I'm gonna take it. Reason for that's because the one hour over here still looks kind of shoddy. If the three minute though has a buy signal, then yeah, I'll probably take it. But the one minute, it's just, uh, you know, there's just too much noise on here. Uh, Bisho is asking, what's the best session in your opinion? Um, same session I trade every day, Bisho, New York session. <laughs> uh, well, the, the main reason is because I'm located in the US, right? I, I would trade London if I was awake during London, but you know, I like to get my sleep in the morning. So I, uh, I trade New York, that's my session. If you want to trade other sessions, you can. Um, if you want to trade other sessions, you can always trade like London. Just trade a London asset. Like right here, we trade US thirty. You can trade the DAX thirty, which is the uh, the European equivalent to US thirty, or you can trade UK one hundred. Right? You can trade either one of those. If you want to trade London session, if you want to trade Asia session, Aussie session, you can trade the Aussie two hundred. You can trade the Nisei. Um, I don't know what's the Nisei. It's like two hundred or something. The Nisei two twenty five. So there's different assets for each for each session. I mean, if you want to trade all day, you can trade all day. But me personally, I think the U.S. session is, is the best session, in my opinion, right? Because you're asking for my opinion. Uh, obviously, a lot of people will say London is the best session because it's more volatile. But I personally like the U.S. open because it's a crossover between London and U.S. There's a lot of volatility during that time. So that's why I personally, uh, I personally trade... Uh, you know, just New York session in the morning, six to eight, like six thirty to eight every morning. I trade about an hour and a half each day. That's how I make all my profits uh, from trading. And you guys, if you guys have been on these sessions with me, you guys have seen exactly what can I, you know, produce just trading an hour and a half a day. Nice. So Peter just mentioned that IG is short fifty six percent. Okay, cool. So that's that's perfect. So right here, you can see it's fifty four percent when I refresh this. It's now 56. So the, the reason for this increasing is that retail traders are getting sucked into these cells. So what they're doing is I think price is actually going to go up. I think what, what's happening here is retail traders are getting tricked. They're getting tricked into thinking that price is going down, but in reality, this thing's going to shoot all the way back up. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you don't want to trade in the direction of retail traders. Like I mentioned before, uh, you know, that's, that's how you blow accounts because you don't want to trade like everyone else. You want to trade different. You want to trade like how the uh, market makers and institutions are trading. And this isn't smart money trading. This isn't institutional trading. This is just trading, but we just trade smart, right? Uh, I don't know. A lot of people always talk about smart money trading and stuff like that. I mean, I, I, none of that stuff makes sense to me. Um, we just trade off momentum here and it works. So, you know, don't fix something that's not broken, right? So here's a tr here's an entry here on the one minute that's possibly available. I'm not going to take it because it looks a little risky to me. Um, so this right here is a possible one minute entry. Like I mentioned, I don't feel like taking one minute entries because of how the market's moving right now. Yeah, it looks like the freaking connections. Like, like you guys hear that noise in the background? That's my MT4. Whenever that's happening, that, that just means that something is going on in the market. Like something's being manipulated because uh, the connection for MT4 is just going on and off. There's nothing wrong with my internet connection. So if it just goes on and off for no reason, there is uh, usually from what we've, notice whenever we trade when that noise happens like on and off multiple times there's gonna be sort of some sort of manipulation happening soon so i could probably see this spike up at some point or spike down so i'm not taking this trade right here like i mentioned the one minute's too risky for me i'm looking for a possible entry here on the three minute if i get the entry on the three minute i'll take that um but just be careful right the, like i mentioned the fed is speaking right or they're probably speaking right now because the minutes come out at 11. So they're probably going to be speaking sometime between 8 and 11. And their meeting usually goes on for maybe three to four hours. So 
just, um, you know, keep that in mind. All right, so we'll see what happens from here. Um, it's just too risky, guys. I'm not, I'm not planning on taking anything right now. Um, I did mark up that one minute, but I didn't take it. I also don't, I don't really recommend, if you guys do take it, I think it's gonna be fine. Overall, I think it's gonna be fine, but you would need a wide stop loss. Like take a small lot size because this right here is risky right now. It's it's not something that I recommend you guys take. This is why I didn't, I, I mentioned in the beginning, I wasn't gonna trade on the one minute. I was gonna wait for that confirmation on the three minute over here for me to take that trade. Cause on the one minute, there's just too much noise. So you might want to have a wide stop loss if you're trading the one minute just to uh to be a safety net right because the thing is it's kind of establishing uh a higher high so if this thing right here pushes up from this point you can see it established a low right here so there's a low here's the high all right so with that said what do you think is going to happen right here skyrocket up right so just keep that in mind there's different ways to analyze the market guys i mean you know i've been trading for so long that i don't even think about this stuff i just look at the chart and i can see it already um but i mean this, this is something that you guys probably didn't realize right low high lower high if this closes above and it did close above so that established the uh the lower high um or a high low sorry and then it's you know it's probably gonna go up but who knows you know price is still it's still choppy right now it's not really a moving that direction. I'll be looking for an entry here on the three minute though. If this closes above here, then I'll take the buy. Right now though, I'm just gonna wait. Uh, let's see, Greg's asking, Sean, can you share the IG link for sentiment? Yeah, sure. Let me get this for you right there, Greg. There you go, Greg. All right, there you go, man. We set the alert over here for the one minute for whoever took it. I might hop in this with you guys like real quick. <laughs> one minute. Oh, full TP. I'm not gonna enter it, guys. Uh, it's it's just too it's too risky for me. I'm waiting here for the three minute move. If this closes above there, then yeah, I'll take it. But right now, it's it's just not. It's not in my favor at this moment. So I'll just mark this up in case. We got about 30 seconds left on this candle right here. So I need this to close with that green bullish candle, uh, the, the bullish buy signal. If it closes with the signal, then I'll take the trade. Hop in with you guys. Yeah, this, the market is just too, uh, it's too unpredictable right now, especially with the Fed coming up soon or whatever they're, they're meeting, uh, the FOMC meeting. Uh, we, we don't have a time when it's happening. Usually there's a time when it's happening, but today there's no time. So it's going to be a surprise. All right, pending signal right there. Still hasn't closed, so no confirmation there yet. Right, let me scroll up real quick, see if I missed anything. Uh, let's see, Roman said, we haven't been hit by the lockdown too badly on the West. Uh, it's really been harsh in Toronto. Yeah, a lot of my buddies are in Toronto. That's why. So that's why I'm familiar with like how it is over there. I was supposed to go to a wedding for one of my friends uh, this month, actually July, but we couldn't go there because I'd be in quarantine like 14 days. There's no point. I go there for quarantine and then I have to quarantine to come back. So yeah, no, it's it, it, it definitely here on the, on the West side too, because I'm here in California. Roman, so we're, we're basically on the same side. So it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's been nice with everything reopening. Nice, nice. So you do affiliate marketing as well. Cool. It's awesome, dude. All right, so no entry here yet on the three minute. We just need that buy signal. Once this closes right here, we can take it, but it hasn't closed yet. We have about a minute 55 left on this candle. If it closes, we'll take it. If not, we'll keep waiting. Uh, let me just scroll down real quick. All right, so Eddie said, good morning, Sean. I'm new here, just signed up for your service last week. I wanted to ask, how do you calculate US 30, for example, is 0 0.01? Uh, Eddie, so it would depend on your broker. Uh, depending if your broker is a mini broker or a, 
uh, a mini micro or standard lot broker. So for example, uh, I'll just put, I'll use examples right here for you. Okay, so this is a uh, US 30, uh, lot size valuations. So um, for a, a standard lot, Size broker, which would be something like, uh, so for example, right here, that would be uh, Hugo's way, right? A lot of you guys like Hugo's way. So a 0 0.01 equals, uh, what is it, a, a 10 cents per pip. Damn, I was going off my thing. 10 cents per pip uh, for a mini lot size broker, like I'm trying to figure out what's a mini size lot broker. A mini lot size broker, like I think CoinX, you just move the zero over by one. Example, CoinX. So like for this, uh, 0 0.01 is going to be, you just move the decimal over by one. So this will be a, a penny per pit, right? So this is a difference between the, uh, the broker. I mean, it just depends on which broker you're using. Eddie, okay, so you're, you're using Hugo's Way. They use um, they use a standard lot size broker. So basically, a 0 0.01 is going to be 10 cents per pip. So if you're going to be trading with Hugo's Way, you should have at least a thousand in your account uh, to trade with them. If you have a if you have a smaller account, then you can trade with Coinex, like with half the amount. Probably like 500 would be good. But yeah, if you're trading with Hugo's way, I don't recommend anything um, under a, a thousand because they're a standard lot size broker. So, you know, it's going to be, it's going to cost more for you to trade and their, uh, their leverage isn't, I mean, it's all right, but it's not, it's not going to allow you to trade uh, freely. So just keep that in mind, Eddie. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully that helps with your question. I, if this if this doesn't answer your question, you know, let me know, and then I can yeah you know, I can break it down however you need it. But I mean, for the most part, I think this should be enough for you to understand you know how much it's uh it's worth per pit. Yeah, definitely no problem, Eddie. Glad I could help you with that. Let's see if there's anything else over here, real quick. So yeah, guys, just like I mentioned earlier, there's no uh I mean there's no entry here for three minute. We're waiting for it to close above. So I think what's going to happen here is they're just going to keep slowly pushing it down. And then all of a sudden, it's just going to spike up because what they're going to do is they want to keep luring in more retail traders, right? So you can see right here, retail traders, it's 55% people short now. It seems like people are just going back and forth. They're not really staying on the short side. They're either pulling out because they're scared or they're pulling out because they're getting stopped out. So just, um, you know, just, uh, just, just keep that in mind if you guys are thinking, uh, to enter any trades right now. Because I think from this point right here, this is probably just going to, it's gonna have a slow move down, maybe consolidate a little bit, just consolidate to, towards the bottom, and then it'll just round its way up to stop the retail traders out who are getting lured into these cells right here. Uh, let's see. So let me just see over here the YouTube real quick. Um, Lisa said, Sean, are you a morning person? I hope so, with a 6 a.m. alarm. <laughs> yeah, it's actually 5 a.m. for me, uh, Lisa, because I get up a little earlier, just get my day started, and I get on this live session with you guys like right at 6. So I'm, I'm, I'm not a, I wasn't a morning person, but you know, it's hard not to wake up this early. Or it's not hard to be motivated to wake up this early when you can make so much profit just trading for an hour a day. So that's my motivation with getting up in the morning, but I'm not necessarily a, a morning person normally. Let me see if there's anything else here real quick before I continue on. Uh, Kel said, 15 minute order block looks solid on US 30. So let's check that out real quick. Um, so we got the 15 minute. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see what, which order block you're referring to. So I'm not really good at order blocks, but I could kind of see something. It's a lower one. So I'm looking for one that's closer. 
usually wherever it comes back for a retest. So let's see. I don't know if you're referring to this one right here, Kel. I mean, yeah, this looks like this could possibly be, I mean, it looks solid right here. If this is considered the, the order block that you're referring to. The thing with order blocks is that they're so subjective, right? Like, like what I see could be totally different from what someone else could see. So instead of using order blocks, I just use my K2SR indicator to draw my zones. So if I use this right here, it kind of makes things a lot easier. I just draw this right here. And these sometimes align with the order blocks. It's just, um, these are more so identified as rejection areas. Because the problem with order blocks is that, I mean, it's super subjective, right? Like um, I could see something sometimes that some something that other people see, but for me, I prefer to just use my indicator right here. So, I mean, there's a lot of areas of rejection on this point for the 15 minute. But I mean, we'll have to wait and see what happens from here. It is, it is going to be a, a, you know, a risky time though. Yeah, let me try to the dice real quick. It's getting hot here. All right, Cal, cool. Cal sent me his, um, his screenshot real quick. Let me see what you got right there, Cal. Oh gosh, okay. So like right below it looks like, I'm trying to see where, 15 minute. So I'm looking for that one candle that you drew. Yeah, that's weird. I don't, your, your chart looks like way different from mine. Let me scroll in a little bit. Let me just turn everything off. Let me turn on my, my Dyson fan real quick. It's getting hot over here. Uh, today's a heat wave, that's why. Nice. Okay, cool. So it's good. I right, know he's looking at this right here. So I'm trying to look at what uh, Kel marked up right here. So it looks like you got it from this area right here. Oh, I see it. Okay, I see it. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So your herb block is around that area right there. Price looks like it broke right through it though. So, um, and we'll just see what happens from here. Yeah, I can see it. I think this is where you drew it, right? It looks kind of similar to yours. Yeah, I mean, we'll see where it goes from here. This might even like, so what, happen, what might happen with this is this might have a, uh, a wick off this, this little order block that you drew there. So this might wick off it. And it'll just bounce up, but who knows? We got about two minutes left on this candle. So let's go back to the three minute. And this is completely fine, guys. If the price keeps shooting down like this, we're just gonna shift to a, we're just gonna keep shifting to, we're gonna shift to a sell instead. So let's look at the fundamentals real quick. Fundamentals are now down 40 points. It's not a lot, but it's down 40 points. Look at the stock market right here or the stock index for US 30. Uh, Goldman Sachs is down five points. Moines down four points. Caterpillar is down 1.7. United Health is down 1.4. Chevron's down 1.49. Walt Disney is down 1.3. The rest are kind of relevant. They're, they're under one point. Uh, looking on the green side over here, we have Microsoft up two points, Home Depot up two points, Apple up two points, 3M up one point, and Procter & Gamble up one point. So it looks like it's more on the red side right now. Um, it's not very strong, but it is on the red side. It's down 40 points right now here on the daily. Looking at the futures data over here, it's uh, it's still up slightly, but it's like right down the middle. So you can see that there's no bias here on the fundamental side. Uh, in order for there to be a bias, you want it to be either down 100 points or above 100 points. But right now, there's just nothing for us to uh, to really confirm at this time. Looking at the retail traders over here, uh, you can see that it's starting to increase. Right, 56% of people are short. These are retail traders right here on the IG. So with that said, you know if the retail traders are going on the short side then odds are market makers going to go the opposite. So I think right now they're still trying to trap some retail traders, um, which is fine. You know, it's fine. We're not going to hop in uh, with them because I think this right here looks like a, like a complete trap to me. Uh, 
usually when you see something like this, what happens is, so if you're a normal trader, right? And you're not analyzing things the way we're that we're analyzing. If you see something like this, what usually happens, you guys, you guys chase the move, right? You see it dropping. You're like, Oh, I got to enter the cell. So you enter that cell right there. As soon as you enter, what happens? Price goes and reverses on you completely and stops you out. Right. And then it comes back down. And then what happens again, it tricks you again. You think that's going to keep dropping. You enter for another cell. And then what happens from there? It goes down a little bit and then it spikes right up to hit your stop loss, right? Um, that's just, you know, it's clear market manipulation. So just, you know, just keep that in mind. So we'll uh, we'll follow this, but it's not necessarily one that I'm going to uh, to take, right? Because uh, I don't fall for those traps. I've been trading for too long to fall for those, those traps right there. So let me see this over here. Oh, bro, you drew it from right way down there. Okay, that's why. Cause I was looking at uh, this right here. You had a line right there. So I was like, is that your order block? <laughs> and I see it, Kel. Okay, gotcha. No, definitely. I can see it now. Cause MT4 is so outdated, bro. I don't, I don't even know what I'm looking at when I look at MT4. You see these lines here? <laughs> like these lines look like they could be anything to me. But um, yeah, no, I can see your order block down there now. So going over here on the 15 minute, your order block is right down below. Right over here. So, I mean, what I could generally do from this point is I usually go to like the uh, the one hour. So what I do right here is I'll go right here to the one hour and look, you go back on the 15 minute and there goes your order block, right? <clears throat> the same order block that you just drew, I got on the one hour right there. It's one of my one hour zones. So this would be considered, you know, the one hour zone for me. So like right here, I mean, what could happen at this point is this could easily bounce off this point right here. And then it could just, you know, shoot on up from there. But who knows? It could shoot up or it could shoot down. We don't really, we really don't know until it uh until it uh it happens, right? We're not gonna we're not gonna go and predict what's gonna happen ahead of us. We're just gonna analyze the market as it gives us hit as we see them. So let me see what else we got over here. I'm just going to go back to the, uh, the Zoom real quick and see what I'm missing over here. So let's see. Greg said, uh, looking, look at audio as TV, break support trend line, sellers coming in. So I look for a buy soon. Can you give me your thoughts? Yeah, so here's, uh, here's Greg's. Uh, markup right here. So Greg's identifying a possible rejection off this area here. So I'll pull up uh, odd USD for you real quick. Since there's nothing here on US 30 right now, it's, it's fine. We can go look at other things. So I'll go over here and take a look at uh, odd USD for you guys. And thank God I did not call this trade. Look at the market's kind of, it's it's moving really funky today, guys. Uh, the reason for that's because we're coming back from a holiday weekend. This this is normally how market moves. It just moves a lot. It's, it moves very irregular. So going over to uh, odd USD, and looking at OJPY, so guys, unfortunately, it hit our stop loss. Uh, you can see the the like the unusual move, market movements, right? So it hit stop loss, like it literally just triggered it. So if I hide this right here, see how it, it literally just wicked up there, and then it came all the way back down in a profit. It's just this is how the market moves, guys. Sometimes the market just moves like that, um, and there's nothing we can really do about it, right? It's like if the market's moving like this, it's best to probably just uh, just sit out the market. But going back to your question over here, Greg, um, I do see it possibly bouncing, but I don't necessarily see it happening anytime soon. I see the balance could probably happen down here. So I think this could possibly uh, line up with your uh, your markup right here. This is a late entry that I was going to mark up for odd USD right here, but I didn't obviously I didn't take it because of uh, the way the market's moving. But like right here, you can possibly see this come down from here. And then when price reaches its zone right here, it can do one of two things. It'll either bounce up from here or it'll break below and continue dropping. Right, if it breaks below here and confirms that break and close, then it'll probably just keep dropping. However, it can bounce off here as well, like you mentioned. So there's two different scenarios. You know, you guys always have to analyze things from two different ways. Don't always be one-sided. Um, and then weigh your pros and cons, depending on which direction you plan on trading it. But I definitely could possibly see this, Greg, going to, um, you know, going to this area down here and then possibly bouncing off it. But I mean, there's no guarantee that's going to happen, right? You'd have to wait for that confirmation. What I'd probably wait for is for the confirmation of the rejection and then catch it as it confirms 
a swing back to the upside. So that's it for that right there. Um, if you guys want me to analyze this from scratch, I can come back and analyze it. I just want to go through all the questions and make sure that I'm not, uh, that I'm not missing anything from everyone else first. So let me just scroll up real quick. Uh, Sharon Dispo, I think this is you, Jay, right? Are you on your, I think you're on your wife's uh, Zoom. Um, you said there, it was a sell signal on the minute, correct? Since it was below the pivot, bearish. Yeah, so this right here, this is why I didn't take the buy, right? This sell over here actually would have been a better entry. Yeah, so yeah, uh, Jay, this technically would have been a good entry right here. We were looking for a possible buy, but you know, like I mentioned before, market's not really moving smoothly right now. So we're looking for the uh, confirmations. Also right here, it looks like the confirmation is now for a sell because it's below for the 10 minute, it's below for the three minute, and it's also below for the uh, for the one minute. But we're not gonna hop into this right away or even at all because um, the retail traders are on the short side. You can see it's 58% short. You can expect some sort of reversal at some point. It looks like it's starting to reverse from right here. This might be the low right here. And then it just might reverse up and stop everybody out basically. Cause you know, what they're doing right now is they're trying to lure in more sellers. Once this gets to like 60%, 65%, 70%, then you'll start to see huge reversals right now. They're still, they're still loading up the sellers. So they're pretty much loading this up. They're, they're giving people like basically false hope that it's going to, it's going to keep going down. And then once more retail traders enter this for a sell, you know, the market usually does the opposite. It'll just reverse on them. So that's why I'm not really playing these games right here. Cause you know, the market's just playing games right now. It's just trying to lure in sellers or lure in buyers uh, in whatever direction that they want price to, uh, to be loaded up on so that they can make all their money. Right. Cause you can see right here, like for example, right here, you can see there was probably a lot of retail traders here looking for buys. And then all of a sudden, look what happened from here. They just reversed it completely. This is how they make their money. They stop out retail traders. So don't fall for those traps guys, you know, be patient, be careful. Um, and if I don't say, if, if I say it's a risky trade, you know, it, it's probably gonna be a risky trade, but looking at this right here, look at how it's starting to reverse because retail traders are starting to hop on the sell side. So looking at that right there, imagine how many people are getting stopped out right now ton of people, right? Because what happened here is like, check this out. If you're a normal trader and you see this waterfall right here, right? This waterfall effect, what does a normal trader think? They see this right here and they're like, oh, this is a complete, it's going to keep dropping, right? Wrong. <laughs> it does complete opposite. So what happens here is retail traders will enter shorts right here because they get excited. They're like, they, they see the hype. They see everyone entering sales. They see people making money off this. And then as soon as that happens right there, you can see the number here increase. As soon as that happens, the next candle right here kind of tricks you thinking that it's going to drop some more and then it just goes straight up and like people's stop losses are probably getting triggered right now. Right. So just keep that in mind. Don't fall for these traps, guys. Uh, you know, I've been trading for long enough to not fall for these traps anymore. Uh, so, you know, if, if I see a trap, I'm not going to fall for it. Like looking at this right here, whoever entered the cell at this point, where do you think the stop losses are placed? You know, you got to, this is like playing chess. You have to figure out where, where everybody else's stop losses are. They usually place their stop loss at the previous swing, which would be right here, right? So if, if everyone's stop losses are right here, this is where liquidity is sitting. So if price crosses this area right here, you're gonna see a, a spike in price in this direction because this is where everyone's stop losses are. Um, you know, I've been trading for so long that I've, I've fallen for these traps so many times that I don't fall for them anymore. Uh, what I see happening right here is, this is what I see happening. I'm sure you guys have seen this before where you guys enter a sell let you guys enter a trade and then it gets really close to your stop loss, right? Like you put your stop loss right there at the previous swing, it gets really close and you see it come down. So you think it's going to keep dropping, but then all of a sudden it just spikes up and it stops you out and then comes right back down, right? It happens all the time. I'm sure, I'm sure it's happened to a lot of you guys. It's happened to me a lot of times. Um, and this is the re this is how I'm able to identify these patterns because I've taken so many L's with these little manipulations in price that uh that i just don't fall for it anymore um but yeah so like i mentioned right here guys this is where a lot of liquidity is sitting because i could tell a lot of people have their stop losses placed at this previous swing right here which is about 500 pips up so we'll see what happens from this point um and you know we're just gonna wait we're not gonna fall for any of these traps we're gonna wait for the actual direction to be set once the direction's set we'll start you know hammering down on these trades but right now we're just gonna be chilling
chilling and waiting patiently for a possible entry. All right, so let me just mark this up right here. I'm just gonna mark up market open right here so I can show you guys how price is moving. So guys, this is usually the pattern that happens when the market opens. Usually there's a breakout upwards and then what happens is price will either continue on up or it'll drop back down to uh, where originally was right here. And that's basically what happened. It dropped back to where it originally was. And then at this point here, you can see on the 10 minute, there's starting to be some wicks right here, right? Some wicks right there. So what we'll probably see is some sort of retracement up here. I mean, who knows? All I know is that I'm not going to fall for these traps here. So I'm going to be waiting for, uh, I'm going to be waiting for, for this to uh, play out. I'm going to leave this mark up right here so that you guys can see where that area of liquidity is. But I'm not going to be entering any of these trades. So let me just scroll down a little bit and see what I am missing. So Kenton said Asian low as well. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I, I see where it's at right now. Uh, Sharon said, or not Sharon, Jay. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, Fatima is asking, Sean, have you ever blown an account? Yeah, I know. Everyone's blown an account before. If someone tells you that they've never blown an account, they're, they're lying to you. Uh, I've been training for like 11 years now. So during the first couple of years, I've blown a lot of accounts. Honestly, I, I wasn't that good of a trader from the beginning because I never had a mentor. I never paid for a course because uh, I just didn't have money for it back then. I literally learned everything from YouTube and Google. So I went on YouTube, I learned everyone's strategies, and then I started to develop my own strategies from that. Um, and it just came from practice. So for for me, I, uh, I've blown a lot of accounts from the beginning. I don't, um, I mean, I haven't blown an account in like, maybe five years now, maybe, yeah, maybe a little over five years now I've blown an account because I, I understood risk management. As long as you understand risk management, you should be fine. But um, in the beginning, I did blow a lot of accounts. I lost a lot of money in the beginning, but I made it all back. Like, like once I started to understand how to do things. So, you know, just being realistic with you, like if someone tells you, tells you that they've never blown an account, they're lying to you for sure. Or they're not a real trader. Uh, everyone's blown an account. You have to make mistakes to like learn from them and actually grow from that phase. So yeah, you know, quick answer to your question is yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. I've blown many of accounts in the uh, in the past, but it's been a long time since I've blown an account, and I'm probably never going to blow an account again because uh, I know I understand risk management now. Uh, let's see, Roman said, uh, "Have have you been trading while you were an attorney?" Yeah. So Roman, if uh, I mean you're new here, but if you're if you've been with K two like when K two started, like before it was a company. Uh, probably like two years ago, I was, I used to give signals from my, my office when I was a lawyer, <laughs> I used to trade all day and, um, like literally every morning I'd be on the live session. Well, I wouldn't be on the live session, but I'd be giving out trades whenever I took trades and I'd be working as an attorney. It got to a point where I was making more money as a trader than an attorney. So I just, you know, I just quit. Uh, and it was perfect time as you're on COVID. So it, it just, it worked out for me perfectly, but yeah, I've, I've always been trading. I was an attorney, uh, for the past I don't know. I was, I was an attorney for like probably the, the past like four years, three or four years. And uh, yeah, I mean, I just had enough of it. So I left and uh, here I am. I'm a full-time trader now. Uh, yeah. Fatima said you were just so conservative with your trading. I truly respect that. It's the hardest thing to do. Yeah, exactly. Fatima. I'm super conservative with my trading because I don't like to lose. Right. If you guys have seen our win rate here at K2, um, you know, our win rate's pretty good. The reason why it's so good is because I'm very conservative with my trades. Uh, we do take a pretty decent amount of trades, but most of our trades do win, you know, like going back to our, uh, our win percentage for June. So for June, like I mentioned yesterday, we took 64 trades, right? So 62 divided by 64, for the entire month of June, all of my US 30 trades that I called here on the live session, we had a 97% win rate. And that's all live. You can go back and watch every live session for June and match every trade that I called with the trades uh, marked up here. And you guys can see that, uh, you know, I did this all legitimately. <laughs> I did it all real time. You guys saw me take the trades. None of these trades were taken off the live session. They're all taken during live. So if you guys want to go back and vet my trades from June, go ahead and look at that. For the year so far, uh, we took a total of we had 214 wins and 27 losses. So a total of 241 trades. So if you divide our wins, 214 by 241, for US 30, I have about a 89% win rate for the year so far from January up until now. 
uh, July. So, I mean, it's pretty decent, right? A lot of people struggle to get above 50%. I'm at like 89%. So it's, uh, it's, it's pretty solid. And you guys can go back and watch all of my previous sessions. Let's see, Maddie said possible entry on the one minute. So let's go on the one minute real quick. Oh, I am on the one minute. So yeah, Maddie mentioned that there's a possible entry here on the one minute. Uh, I personally, here, let me see. So the 10 minute looks solid. Three minute looks solid. One minute looks solid. Um, let me go to the one hour real quick. One hour looks solid for a sell. Looks like a sell all around. The only thing that I would be worried about right here, Maddie, is the fact that a retail trader is starting to hop into this. I mean, technically you could probably hop into it and, and make a quick profit off the, uh, off of one minute sell right here, because it's not really much of a big move, right? The only thing that you want to be worried about is that it's at a support. Right. So the thing is, if you enter this right here, it can easily bounce off this point. What you'd be looking for is you probably would want this to close. Uh, below. Oh, it did close below here. So, yeah, if it closes below here, then, yeah, you could possibly take this for a. Uh, for a sell, but I mean, we could. Um, we can. Uh, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't take it, man. So if you're asking me if I would take it, I wouldn't take it. I mean, I know you like to take risky trades, so you can possibly take it if you get it. But, uh, you know, you know how I trade. I don't like to lose trades. So if it's too risky, I'm not going to risk it. Uh, you know, I hate losing trades. Guys. That's, that's one of the things I hate about trading because, um, you know, I took so many L's in the past. That I'm not trying to take any more L's. But looking at this right here, see how it's rejecting off that point like I just drew? I had that circle right there. See how it's rejecting off that point? It might just bounce right up from here. So yeah, if you want to take it, Maddie, because I know you're new, like, you know, this is all new to you. So this is all exciting and you want to take a bunch of trades. Uh, what I would recommend is take a smaller lot size. If you just want to get some skin in the game, take a smaller lot size just to have, you know, that feeling that you're in the position. Um, I wouldn't take a full lot size right now, though. It's, it's kind of risky. You could probably take half a lot size or a quarter lot size um, just to, to get that excitement, you know, because I know you're excited and you want to take every trade. Uh, and, and you've been hitting it. Like, don't get me wrong. You've been hitting the trades. It's... Uh, See, see that right there? If you would have entered that cell, you would have been screwed because it just came all the way back up right here. Now, the key right now is to be conservative. It's about to be 8 o'clock, so the Fed is... Uh, let me see if there's anything new here for the news. Uh, the Fed minutes are still coming out at 11, so I think their meeting is probably starting right now. If you start to see some volatility in the markets because the meeting is probably started at that point. So let me just scroll up real quick and see what else am I missing over here. Ken said one minute signal possible sell. Boeing down gold. What going down five? The gold man down six. Everything looks like a sell. I want to buy. <laughs> yeah, Ken wants to buy, so he's trying to catch that uh, that low. So as you guys can see right here, see how it's shifting all the way up. If price reaches this point right here, expect a spike up because this is where their stop losses are. You can see that now price is just ranging, right? Basically, whoever the retail traders who are hopping into those cells right now, they're getting burnt. So 58%, if you see this number decrease of 58 to 56, that's because people are getting stopped out. Um, let's see, check this out right here. Damn, look at that trap. See Cal, the trap that we were just talking about? Definite trap. Damn, people are getting stopped out left to right. So if you're entering these cells right here, it's you know, this is why we don't enter the cells because they're just trapping people. Uh, if price ends up crossing above here and closing, you can probably expect it to continue pushing up higher. So let's see what happens here. Um, and it's just funny to me, right? Because because I used to follow through these traps all the time, and I would get so mad when I get stopped out. But now I understand how the market moves, so I don't really get caught in these traps. So see that right there? It's crossing. See the, the liquidity? It's starting to push up because this is where people's stop losses are. Uh, another area of stop losses would be somewhere around here because people, you know, everyone thinks the same. Like if you look at any retail trader, they all think the same. Um, their stop loss, the next area of liquidity is probably up here. Because you just got to see where people are placing their stop losses. If you're entering a sell, where do you put your stop loss at the previous swing? Where's the next swing? Up here. Where's the next swing from there? Up here. Um, so we'll see. I mean, I'm not going to mess with it. I'm not going to enter any buys just yet. I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm just going to wait and see what happens from here. 
because oh, so another thing, guys, I'm like, if you guys have been following me from this morning, we took that morning trade. So I'm already up a thousand for the day. I'm up a thousand two hundred. So I'm not really, I'm not really inclined to take any trades, right? Like, for example, if I just add this up right here, so this is my first trade right here. It's 465 plus below down here, 755. So I'm in profit about 1,220. So right now, I don't really need to risk anything. I'm happy with this. If I do 1,200 a day, you know, you multiply that by five, that's 6,100 a week times four, that's 24,400 a month. If I uh, multiply it by 12, 12 months in the year, that's already 292,000. So if you guys trade conservatively, you can, you know, this is what's possible. And I only took one trade for today. So just keep that in mind. Uh, whenever you guys take a trade, right? Look at the long-term picture. A lot of you guys want to make these huge profits in like one day. But the thing is, if you're just consistent and you don't lose trades, you know, your account will continue to, um, your account will continue to, uh, to grow and compound over time. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Yeah, Roman said, good time to play ping pong between those zones. Exactly right. It's just, uh, let's see what's happening here. Let's see, retail traders, 57. So you see right here, remember how I said it was 58? And I said it was going to it was gonna decrease to like 57 or 56. The reason why it decreased is because they got stopped out. Their stop loss was placed right there at this line, at this area. And then they got stopped out of the position. If price closes above here, if it keeps pushing up higher, you're going to expect this number to go even smaller. It's probably going to go down to like 56, 55, because more people are going to get stopped out. So we'll, um, you know, we'll see, we'll see where it goes from here at this point. <laughs> Sam said, yeah, Sean doesn't like to lose trades. Spoken like a true lawyer. I mean, it's the same with like me being a lawyer, right? When I was a lawyer, I didn't like to lose cases. Uh, I don't think I ever lost a case when I was a lawyer. I, I either settled before it happened or I, or I, you know, won the case. So it's risk management, you know, risk management works in all ways with trading, with work, with life, <laughs> with everything. Right. Um, but yeah, so if price ends up pushing up past this area, you can probably see this number start to decrease. So I'm basically just, I, I'm, I'm like looking from a, from a fishbowl perspective, right? Like the retail traders are the fishbowl and we're looking from the outside. We're trying to see who's getting stopped out and who's losing money right now. Because whoever's here on the short side, they're losing money because it's gonna keep pushing up. So, um, I mean, we'll see where it goes from here. So let me just go over here real quick. Uh, Roman said, what were your favorite cases to solve back in the day? Uh, so when I was working, I used to defend cases for Uber. So like, you know, Uber, the driving company, I would defend the driver. So when they get into crazy car accidents, uh, I would defend the driver. Um, so, you know, I would have a lot of crazy cases like fatalities and people getting run over and stuff like that. So, I mean, I have a lot of interesting cases, but that was mainly what I did. Uh, I was a civil defense attorney. So I basically defended companies and I defended um, bigger clients because I worked at a big firm. So I kind of had a... Uh, I had free reign over a lot of interesting cases. Uh, Chris is asking what kind of law did I do? I was a civil defense attorney, but I worked for a corporate firm. So I pretty much just handled a lot of those, a lot of those types of cases. All right, anyways, let me just scroll up real quick. I don't want to go off track. Let me just scroll up real quick and see if I'm missing any other questions here. Uh, let me just scroll up real quick. Hey, Lana, morning. Uh, Sankeet said, hey, brother, I want to learn how to trade US 30. If you guys want to learn how to trade US 30, um, you guys can go on the on the website, k2trades.com, and then you can click on K2 strategy course here to unlock all of the, uh, to learn all the strategies that we're applying here. So basically everything that I'm going over today or everything that I go over every live session, um, I go over all these strategies so that you guys can learn it. You know, basically if you look here at everyone's profits for the day, so Kimmy over here, yeah, Kimmy's up 17,000 for the day. He took a huge loss right there, but he took a huge win right there. So Kimmy over here, he took some trades right there. And as you guys can see, everyone here locking these profits, you know, I only took one trade, but if you're, if you know the strategies, you guys can lock in way more profit. Like Jelan over here, he locked in 4,000 for the day. I'm only up 1,200, but you can see other members here are locking way more profits than me. Um, as long as you guys know what you're doing and you guys are solid with your, you know, your, your, your uh, understanding of how the market's moving, you guys can lock in a ton of profits. Sisu here as well. And this is all in the K2 premium. So Sisu here as well, he's trading, uh, 
odd JPY, <laughs> a small odd JPY, but a bunch of US 30. He's up about 5,000 for the day. So as you guys can see, a lot of the traders here who I trained to trade and who I've mentored to trade, they're doing a lot better than me, right? And it's fine because like I mentioned before, guys, trading is not... Trading with K2, there's no competition here, right? We want everybody to win. Even if you guys are making more profit than me, you know, I'm not going to be salty about it. I'm actually happy that you guys are profiting uh, uh, more than everyone here, right? Because, you know, I, if you go to other groups, you'll see, like, not everyone's as consistent as us. Uh, here at K2, it's, you know, everyone's just doing pretty solid. Tariq over here, too, up 713. Uh, and he marked this up right here using, you know, the strategy as well. So nice work, Tariq. He caught that right there. A shy's ask. Asha, I'll look at your message later. I don't. Wanna, I don't want to look at any personal messages while we're uh, on this live session. So I'll, I'll look at your messages later. But yeah, you can definitely upgrade. Uh, Patricia over here. She locked in five thousand five hundred sixty. Wow! Big congrats to Patricia here. So she's done for the day. So as you guys can see, I'm not the only one profiting here, right? There's a ton of people in K2 that are profiting. Uh, Abraham too. Oh, Abraham, yeah. So he's up uh, 219. Nice work, Abraham. Congrats, bro. So a lot of you guys are done for the day. You know, the market is moving kind of funky right now which, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot better for you guys to just be a little more careful than to uh, hop into some risky stuff here. Let's see Jay over here as well. Uh, Jay is sharing in the, in the, in the, um, in the zoom. <laughs> so you saw Sharon in the zoom. That's Jay right here. See how it's pushing up. I, I told you guys, once it crosses right here, there's going to be a huge spike of volatility, right? And look what happened. It's playing out exactly like we anticipated. Uh, because this is where everyone's stop losses are. If everyone gets their stop loss triggered, what happens? Price goes up. So the next area where stop losses are is going to be up here. Looking at the, uh, see that? It's doing exactly what I said, right? I said it was going to go down from 58 to 56. What happened? 58 to 56, because they're getting stopped out. All the retail traders here on the short side, they're getting stopped out of their positions. So next area of stop losses is going to be around here. So just keep that, up. Keep that in mind, guys. Keep it in mind. Yeah, Abraham said, yeah, man, it's been great trading with you. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely, Abraham. I'm glad to see all you guys profiting here, you know? Even if I'm not taking these trades and I'm just helping you guys out, answering questions, giving you guys my analysis, I'm happy to see everyone profit here at K2. I mean, we, we there hasn't been one day where K2 members haven't profited here. Um, you know, even if I'm taking it easy, you guys are still profiting all day, every day. So definitely great work. Uh, Jay over here, he said, missed the first trade, but it's okay, small profit. So he made about 450 off that. Nice work, Jay. All right, cool. So yeah, everyone here is doing pretty solid. I mean, if I go over to the profits for the day, so th these are just from this morning. We've only been on this live session for about an hour. Jay's up 450 for the day. Abraham's up 219. Patricia's up 5,560. C-Soup's up 4,928. 4, uh, Kimmy's up 19,000 right there. Jalan's up 4,000 right here. Uh, Kimmy again right here, 17,000. Isaac's up 622. Brittany's up 1,295. Miles is up 567. EW's up about 2,000 right there. Miles again, 446. Uh, Abraham from earlier, 175. Albert up 50 bucks right there. 50 bucks on his other account. Patrick up 890. Tavon over here up 1,000. Steven up 1,700. Sisuk up 1,200 on his other account, I believe. Uh, and earlier that day, he was, uh, or his other account here is 763. So this is just from today. You can see the timestamp, right? Literally from today, uh, this is what everyone's made. Uh, we haven't gone one day without any K2 members making profit. Even if I'm not trading on the day, I'll help you guys make profit regardless, right? There's, there's always there's always room for, for profitability there. You know, as long as you guys know how to analyze the market, you guys can profit one way or another. Uh, looking at this over here, nice work, Roland. You just passed your funding talent. Congrats. So, you know, every day here, someone's passing their FTMO, someone's passing their funding talent. It's not that difficult to pass. Uh, literally every day in K2, there's at least like one or two people passing their funding talent or FTMO. Uh, for me, I actually started another funding. I started a funding talent because I already have two uh, FTMOs. I'm already maxed out on there. So I'm uh, moving over to funding talent. I'm just copying all my trades to the other account as we go. So let me just go to the Zoom real quick and see what else I'm missing. Uh, Roman said, Sean's life story is more interesting than trading at this point. <laughs> yeah, and I've done a lot of a lot of stuff in my lifetime. Roman with uh, school work and all that. Uh, Miles said, did any of your former, former lawyers quit their jobs to trade after seeing your success? Uh, not really, Roman. I mean, uh, Miles, uh, a lot of people didn't follow what I was doing because a lot of people don't understand the market like I do, right? 
Um, not everyone can do what I do. Not everyone can analyze how I'm analyzing and pick up things the way that I do. So, you know, just because I'm able to do this doesn't mean everyone can do this, right? Um, I mean, you guys can, it's possible. It's just, it's not a guarantee that everyone can do this. So uh, there's, I think, two attorneys that I knew from law school that became traders as well. But I mean, from work, I don't, I don't think anyone really trades the way I do. They, uh, they mostly trade for, uh, I mean, they, they trade on the side, but they don't trade uh, as a day trader. So let's see this real quick. Um, let's see. Move over here real quick. Yeah, I don't think anyone here has any losses. I'm just looking over here. I'm trying to see if anyone has any losses for today. Like any real losses, right? An accidental loss, I'm not going to count that because obviously, like right here, uh, there's an accidental loss. It's like eight bucks. I don't think that's a real loss right there for Abraham. Um, you know, a real loss would be like 10 bucks or 100 bucks, something like that. Uh, everyone here has straight wins. Literally, everyone has straight wins. All blue. This loss right here for a sell, I don't know what happened with Kimmy there, but Kimmy had a big loss there for a sell. I don't, I don't know where uh, Kimmy got that from. But everyone else, Jalon, straight uh, wins right here. Isaac, straight wins right here. Uh, Brittany, she had straight wins. I wouldn't count this as a loss. It's a $6 loss. It's nothing compared to her profit. So I think that might have been an accident there. Uh, EW, all wins. Miles seems like it's all wins too. Uh, Abraham is from him earlier. Albert wins right there. And Albert, uh, Albert's other account right here. I think this was from the other day. Not sure which one he took there. Or maybe he took one right there and he lost. But yeah, he had a couple losses here. It looks like he traded Bitcoin, XRP, and US 30. So he had a couple losses uh, there. But everyone else looks pretty solid for the most part. Tavon over here, he had a, a sell loss right here. I'm not sure what, where he took that trade. But yeah, for the most part, everyone has, for the most part, wins. Maybe like one loss, but overall, just straight wins for the most part. Um, but okay, let me go to the chat real quick and see what else am I missing here. Scroll up real quick. There's a lot of messages here on the YouTube that I missed. Um, yeah, sure. It seems to be yeah, true. Anyone wake up? Anyone awake to make this much quicker money from breakout entry? Yeah, exactly. I personally just look at this here. Hey, Mary. Morning. Um, scroll over real quick. Where is the industrial average short scene mentioned? So let me go over here real quick and look at the industrial average. So looking at the uh, the daily for today, the daily is now down 52 points and the futures is down 79 points. So the bias is still here for a sell. Uh, the thing is they wanna stop out these retail traders before it drops. It's not ready to drop yet. It's gonna drop eventually. I think what's gonna happen here is they're gonna keep stopping these people out. As soon as this number gets closer to like 52, 53, then you can probably expect it to actually drop. I think right here, they're probably trapping more people. So like right here, it's another trap, right? They're, they're making it look like it's gonna come back down. So what happens is more people enter a cell here. And then at this point, people will just get, they'll just keep loading up the cells. They'll keep loading up the cells as soon as they have enough cells right here again. Like if this number increases to like 58, then you can probably expect another spike up at that point. So just, uh, you know, just keep that in mind. Let me scroll down a little bit. Uh, Trico or Trico, I don't know how to pronounce your name, is asking tips on passing FTML 100K challenge. I'm currently at break even, have about 12 days remaining. Um, I mean, my main tip that I can give you is to use proper risk, right? And you have to use, I mean, decent loss sizes because the thing is you have 12 days left. Uh, Trico or Trico, I'm not sure if you take my trades here that I call here on the live session. If you take any of the trades that I actually take myself, I think you should be pretty solid. Um, you should probably use about a three, uh, a three lot. So like, for example, here, if you're trading us 30 with me, uh, and you have a three lot, so three times 500, it's about 1500, right? So you can probably make about 1500 per trade. Um, say you trade with us for like five days, right? You go to seven. Well, what's your goal? Your goal is like 5,000, I think, or is it 10,000? So if you trade with us and you take, you know, X amount of trades, you could probably make your profit goal. If you're just consistent, but you got to make sure that you don't take the risky trades, only take the trades that I'm taking. If I say not to take the trade, that means not to take the trade, right? That doesn't mean uh, take the trade because, uh, 
because it's probably gonna hit, it, it means not to take the trade because I think it's risky. So like, for example, that one minute earlier, I didn't take that trade and I warned you guys like profusely that that was a risky trade and I wasn't gonna take it. I was gonna wait for the three minute. Um, and that's exactly why I didn't take it, right? The good thing I didn't take it because if I took it, I would have lost a trade. So like, for example, right here, this was a horrible trade to take. That's why I kept warning you guys not to take it, that it was risky. And I was looking for the three minute over here to actually confirm it. So that's uh, my, my main tip to you is to, to stay consistent. Don't over leverage, don't over trade. Just take trades that you know are 100% going to win uh, and make sure that you use proper lot sizes. So I'm assuming, I think your, your daily max loss for 100K is like 2,500, right? So divide that by three. Uh, you should probably be risking about 833 per trade. So um, you could probably use between a two and a three. Well, you only have 12 days, so you kind of have to take a risk. So three times 500. I mean, you're probably just gonna have to take the risk. You can either use a two lot or a three lot. Mm. Yeah, you don't really have much because the thing is you have 12 days, you have to count the weekend. So you, you subtract two days from that. You literally only have like seven days to, to pass. So you should probably just use a three lot, but you gotta, you gotta be careful and only take trade that you know are gonna hit. So just keep that in mind when, uh, when you're, uh, you know, deciding to take the trades. Let's see, so Jay's asking possible buy on the one minute. It's a possible buy, but I'm not gonna take it. You know, like I mentioned, I'm waiting for the three minutes to give me entries because the, uh, the one minute, it's just too choppy. There really isn't uh, any direction set yet. Everything's kind of all over the place. Like if you look over here at, um, if you look over here at the three minute and the 10 minute, it's still below, right? So I would want this to be above here before I start looking for some actual buys. So I want it to close above uh, to confirm it before I take any, because right now it, there's just not, it's not a strong confirmation, Jay. If you want to take it, you know, feel free. But like I mentioned for the sell before over here, I'm not going to recommend it. And, uh, you know, I, I still think it's a risky trade. Because the thing is, if you enter this right here, your stop loss is going to be somewhere around this area. It's too close, right? This can still pull back. If so, for example, if this was like higher, like if we got that buy signal like up here, then by all means, I would take that trade because um, you would you, it would show that the confirmation that it's going to go up already, right? So, I mean, I'll mark it up for you here, but I'm not going to take it. Just keep that in mind, guys. I don't recommend you guys take this trade, but I'm going to mark it up for whoever does want to take it. But this is going to be an at your risk trade. I'm not taking it. So just keep that in mind, right? I'll keep an alert here if it hits TP so that I can give you guys the update. Yeah, so I'm not gonna take that trade there. I'll just mark it up for you guys. So I'm not gonna take that trade there at all. Um, let's see where the retail traders are. So it's still at 56%. Um, it's like right down the middle. Looking at the fundamentals over here, it's only down 40 points right now. It's not really that strong for a sell. Looking at the futures data over here as well, it's only 50, 50 points. So it's very strong when it's down 100 points, but right now it's only down 41 points. It's not that strong. Um, all right, so let me just go over here real quick and scroll up. All right, let me see what else did I miss over here. Okay, so it hit full TP. So if you guys decided to take it, it would hit full TP, but like I mentioned, it's risky, right? So you can see right here, if it reaches this area right here, it's gonna hit some liquidity. You're gonna see a breakout, or not a breakout, but you'll see some spike up towards the upside. So just keep that in mind. It's the same thing that happened right here, right? I, I mentioned that if price was to cross above here, you'd see a breakout upwards, right? Look what happened, breakout. Crosses above here, what do you expect to happen from there? Another breakout. So just keep that in mind. So yeah, I'm not sure if you took that, Jay, but if you did, profit. <laughs> It's just, I don't like the one minute guys. There's, there's too much noise on the one minute. It's not something that I like to trade on. Uh, I only trade on it if I'm very confident about it. But right now I'm not confident about the one minute. I'm looking for the three minute here. So yeah, whoever caught that, you know, big congrats. If you guys have profits, go ahead and send them over. And then we can, um, we can add them to our list of profits for the day. 
Yeah, Jay, I'm not sure if you took that trade. If you did, send him with those profits. I want to see what you did uh, with that right there. Because, I mean, it was a solid entry. It's just a risky one. So there you go, full TP off that. <laughs> Jay said, I, uh, LI didn't. I'd rather trust what you say just because I'm new at this. Yeah, I mean, it was a valid entry, though. You were, you were positive on identifying this as a valid entry, but um, it, it, was a, it was a risky entry. That's why I wouldn't have taken it. So let me just scroll down real quick. Let's see what else I'm missing over here. Peter said, uh, Sean was the secret lawyer defending El Chapo. <laughs> All right. Oh man, it looks like uh, you took it. Oh, Brian, looks like you took that one minute. Yeah, man, I would, I'd recommend just being careful, Brian. Uh, you know, it wasn't your fault that you took a loss on that trade. You know, it could have went either way. Like for this, for example, I wouldn't have taken this trade and it actually hit. I wouldn't have this took taken this trade and it and it failed, right? Um, it's just you know the market's just really funky right now. I, I'm waiting for a for an actual confirmation on the higher time frame. When the market's moving weird like this, it's better for you guys to uh, wait for a better confirmation on the higher time frames than on the shorter ones because there's just you know there's just too much choppiness there. All right, let me see if there's any other questions here before I continue on. Nice, Eddie. So Eddie said, just won my first trade on US 30. Thank you, Sean. Uh, my profit was 42 bucks. Not much, but it's a start. Yeah, profit's profit, Eddie. Doesn't matter if you have a big account or a small account. You know, right now you're making 40 bucks, but once you increase that lot size, you'll have 400 bucks, right? You increase that lot size again, you'll have 4,000 bucks off that trade. So just, um, you know, just keep that in mind. Long-term goals here, uh, Eddie. You know, very long-term goals. So I know you just started with this at K2 like last week. You know, you have big, you have, it's, it's, it's just the beginning for you. You have a long way to go. So those 40 bucks, uh, just remember it's going to grow over time. And remember to take profit when it's due. All right, let me scroll up real quick. Or scroll down. Let's see. Short scenes at high, Sean. You are a conservative trader. You take very selective trades. So your risk for every trade is equal or it changes trade to trade uh, about how much you risk on average per trade. So short scene, um, here, let me see. I, I risk about, let's see. So I take a 10 lot times, I right mean, let, let me just do this real quick. So I have a 200K account, but my account's like in profit. So it's not technically 200K. So it's a 200K account on FTML divided by, or I'll do 500. Okay, so 5,000 divided by 200,000. So I'm taking about a 2% risk every trade, uh, short scene. I'm taking about a 2.25% uh, risk per trade. Uh, and that's what I take almost you know every trade that we take here. That's why my lot size is always 10. So if you see my lot size here, it's always 10. Um, and I take about a, uh, I mean, yeah, that's my risk, 2% basically. It doesn't usually change, it just stays at 10. Because the thing is for my FTMO, I just do payouts every month. I don't keep growing it. Well, I mean, I don't leave money in there. So like when my payout comes, I just take it out because I scalp every day. There's no need for me to leave it there. Because the thing is, if I have too much money in there, then I'm gonna take on more risk, right? It's a psychological thing. So. For me, uh, this is what my risk is like. It's about 2%, or it might be less. I mean, it's around two. And the thing is I have like two accounts, so it might be even less than this. It might be like under 2%, because this is just accounting for one account. Um, actually, I'm gonna do that for 400,000. Yeah, so I'm about like 1%, or I mean, it's less than 2%. So that's pretty much what, uh, that's pretty much what, um, what it's looking like for the most part. Yeah, definitely Eddie, hundred percent. You know, you have a long way to go. It's just the beginning for you. Um, okay. Let me check this real quick. So if you guys had any other questions and I haven't gone to your question yet, you know, go ahead and put it in the chat again. There's a lot of messages that came in over here. So I, I kind of missed out on uh okay sorry so for the breakdown earlier um short scene uh corrected me so it's actually a that was an i just missed it oh daily loss is five thousand okay so for the the daily loss of five thousand divided by 
three, it's about 1600. Okay, so three times. Okay, so you could, you could probably use a three or, or a four lot. Um, I mean, a three lot would be on the safe side. Who was I answering that question for earlier? Whoever asked me about the lot size for FTMO for 100K, uh, it's still the same. You'd probably use about a three lot. You can probably increase it to a four lot if you really wanted to. It's between a three and a five, but to be safe, I would just use a three. A five would be pushing it because, you know, obviously if you do five times 500, you're going to be risking. Actually, it's not that bad. You can use a five lot for whoever I was, um, <clears throat> whoever I was referring to earlier. Gotcha, Eddie. Okay, let me just check that real quick right now, Eddie. So let me see. Yeah, Eddie, the system was updating yesterday. So it looks like uh, I'm looking at the system right now. It looks like it had your old, uh, your old um, trading username. It was like Eddie59212. So I'm just going to add that on right now. Uh, after this session, I'll update the system with your new uh, username, Eddie. It looks like your old username was still connected to it. <laughs> yeah, Kyle said, damn, missed the one minute. Yeah, it's the same one that, uh, it's the same one that, um, that Jay was looking at. So let me just check real quick to see if I'm missing anything else here. I just want to make sure I'm not missing any questions. If you guys have questions that I didn't get to answer, I just drop your question again in the chat and I can get over to it because I think I'm, I'm for the most part, I'm not really looking to trade anymore for the day because it's getting close to um, it's already past eight o'clock. I'm usually off this session by eight. Uh, today was just a slow day. There's uh, the Fed speaking at about 11. They're already speaking right now. They're having their meeting and then their notes are going to be released or their minutes are going to be released at 11. It's going to about two hours. Notes are going to be released and it's going, it's going to uh, affect the market. I think volatility is going to die down a bit and it's probably going to go sideways. Um, until the minutes are released at 11. Minutes get released over here at 11 o'clock. So I'm, gonna, I'm expecting a lot of just consolidation and ranging from now until 11. And then from here, you'll probably see a breakout. <clears throat> you'll see a breakout towards the upside or the downside. So just keep that in mind once it gets to that point. All right, let me go back to the... Uh, Let me go back to the uh, Zoom chat real quick. Let me scroll down. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anyone's questions. You know, I want to make sure all your questions are answered and I analyze everything that you guys uh, need to help with. So Eric asked over here, I'm confused. Why are you waiting for a buy signal when the fundamental is red and 10 minute K2 is red? Why not looking for the next sell on the three minute or one minute. Um, let's see, Eric, you asked this about like 10 minutes ago, I think. Uh, the reason that we were looking for a buy is because, you know, this is why, because it came all the way back up because we anticipated that buy there. Uh, the reason that we were looking for that is because the, um, the retail traders were on the short side. I'm not sure if you were following with this, Eric, this, you know, this whole time, because the reason why we were looking for a buy is because the retail traders are on the short side, right? Like, and I'm sure you, you kind of have an understanding of like how market makers and institutions make money. They make money by stopping out retail traders, right? So the thing is, if you want to trade with the retail traders, you go short, you're probably going to lose money because the market's going against you. That's the reason why we were looking for a buy. The thing is, if we were looking for a set, like, and the, the fundamentals here weren't that strong. They were only like, they weren't a hundred points. They were like six points. They were like 10, 20 points, right? Um, I think your, your analysis is like a little you, you don't understand the full picture of things, right, Eric? It's not all uh, technicals, right? The thing right here are, so the problem with technicals is, is that there's a lot of traps here, but the problem is like, you need to actually understand how the fundamentals work. You have to understand how uh, sentiment works as well, because everything comes full circle, right? If you're just looking at the technical side, you probably would have lost a lot of money here because you would have taken the sell because you thought, oh, it's dropping. So it's going to have to sell, right? thing is we don't look at everything linear, right? We look at the fundamentals. We look at the technicals. We look at sentiment. We look at, you know, whatever's going on in the world. If there's news going on that day, we look at multiple things. Um, and that's the reason why we were looking for a buy, because if you look over here, um, you know, obviously this thing went completely opposite. If you're going for that sell there, 
So just keep that in mind. Technicals aren't everything, right? Technicals are basically what all retail traders trade. So this is how you get trapped in these in these trades or like not just you specifically, but like a lot of other people because they're all looking at the same thing. If you look at a sell and you think it's a sell, what do you think the other person is going to think it's a sell, right? What do you think the market maker is going to do? They're going to do the opposite. They're going to go buy because um, they don't make money when retail traders make money, right? That's why the majority of retail traders fail at trading. Um, I mean, you could even Google it. Like you can Google it soon. Percentage. Uh, percentage of profitable retail traders. Yeah, so I mean, if you look here, yeah, like 70 to 80% of retail traders, you know, blow counts or they, they're not that good. Uh, overall, you know, um, there's about like 12% of profitable day traders, uh, maybe 1.6 profitable for the year. So, you know, obviously if, if majority of people are failing at trading, you don't want to trade where they're trading, right? So this is why we look at market sentiments to see where everyone else is trading. We try to do the opposite of what they're doing. So, I mean, if you look here, you know, the data is, the data basically shows, you know, 70 to 80% of retail traders are unprofitable. So it makes like, it, it shows that less than one out of four retail traders are making money. So if everyone here at K2 is making money, um, you know, it, it, it shows something. And that's why we use different, uh, we use different, um, you know, strategies here as we go. So, yeah, you know, going back to your question, that's pretty much why we we're looking for a buy there. So looking at this right here, uh, like I mentioned earlier, guys, I said when price was going to break past it, we see a breakout. Look what happened. It did exactly what I just mentioned, right? Because the thing is, everyone's stop losses are right here, guys. Like, just keep that in mind. All the stop losses are right here. It hits liquidity. Once price breaks above here, it just all the stop losses get triggered, and then it pushes even higher. Looking over here at the retail sentiment, uh, it's still 56% people short. Um, you know, the next target that you guys should be looking for is where, where is everyone else's next stop loss? Their next stop losses are probably right here. So once it reaches this area right here and does the same thing, if it closes above here, you can expect some volatility for it to shoot up even higher. And then from that point, where's the next areas of stop losses? It's probably gonna be up here. So there's, you know, it's, it's just a, it's pretty much a, a stairwell right there. <laughs> Joel said, bring it down. I mean, it's still going up, bro. You guys, you guys were calling that sell earlier, but it did the complete opposite. Uh, yeah, Andrew said it's going to drop hard, believe me. <laughs> I mean, it went all the way up, bro. Uh, you, you guys got to like, because I, I, I can see where you guys are, are thinking. You guys are looking at it from a technical perspective, right? It, technicals don't just always play out like that. So, you know, just like I mentioned with, um, with, uh, what was I talking to Eric earlier? You have to look at things from like different perspectives. There's, uh, there, there's just, you know, there's different um, ways to analyze these things. So I don't think it's necessarily, I don't think it's going to drop anytime soon or it might drop, who knows, but the retail traders here are still, uh, are still short. So until this number gets down to like 50% and then it shifts to the long side, then we could probably expect it to, to drop. But I think for now it's not going to drop. So, you know, just keep, uh, just keep that in mind. But yeah, you guys aren't wrong with your analysis. Like you, Joel, and I think Neandra, you guys are, you guys both analyze it for a sell. I could see that sell because you guys were looking from the technical side. But for me, I was looking at the fundamental side and I was also looking at the sentiment. So that's why I, I knew that I wasn't going to go down yet. So look at this right here. The fundamentals are now bullish. So you're probably going to expect it to keep pushing up higher. I don't think it's going to drop anytime soon. The fundamentals are now 31 points in profit. So it's probably gonna keep pushing up higher and higher. Once it breaks this point right here, it'll probably keep pushing up higher at that point. <laughs> Neandro now said, not today, tomorrow. I'm pretty sure you meant today, Neandro, when you said that. He said, it's gonna drop hard, believe me. Um, Yeah, I know eventually, but the buyers aren't going to fill in until like next couple of days, bro. Like the percentage here is still, it's at 56%. You, 
you'd have to need, you'd need this to be like the opposite, like 60% long, but they're not going to go 60% long, like overnight, right? It's going to happen like over the next couple of days uh, or so. Let's see this over here. Yeah, but no, no, I'm just joking around with you, Neandre. It's going to drop eventually. You guys' analysis is fine. It's just, uh, it's just going to take some time because I'm looking at the, at the sentiment, right? Uh, and we're on the one minute as well. So looking at this right here, if the one hour closes above the pivots over here, then it's probably going to have a bullish move. And then probably by tomorrow, if not tomorrow, the next day or whatever, it's, it, then it'll probably drop. But we got to wait for that confirmation here. But it's okay to be wrong, guys. So like, you know, if you guys analyze something and you call something and you're wrong, that's completely fine. As long as you guys have an analysis for it and your analysis didn't play out, that's, that's fine. It happens sometimes. Um, but, you know, eventually it, it'll, it'll have to it'll have to go one way or the other. So let me just scroll up real quick and see what else was missed over here. Uh, definitely, Eddie. Eddie said I need to go to work now. Thank you very much, Sean, for your help, uh, for sharing your knowledge and giving me my first win. Have a good day. Yeah, definitely, Eddie. I'll see you here tomorrow if you're going to be trading with us. Let me check the Zoom real quick and see what else I'm missing over here. Uh, cash that is funding talent, basically the same setup as FTMO. Uh, they have different account types, cash. It's a little more, it's, it's different. So go on their website and check it out. I don't, this is my first time using funding talent. So I'm not really for, uh, familiar with everything. You probably want to ask someone else who's in the premium, just go on the premium and ask um, a question there. Just pop in the, one of the premium groups and ask, and they'll, uh, they'll give you guys your, uh, I mean, they'll give you their, their um, opinion on it, but I don't personally know because I've, I've only started with them today. Uh, nice. So C soup's up five thousand, about six thousand for the day. So nice work, C soup. So C soup's really done now. Um, let's see, Eddie over here too. So Eddie locked in forty-two bucks. Nice work, Eddie. Your first win today, or your first win in trading for the most part. So yeah, definitely. All right, let me see what else did I miss over here. I'm gonna keep scrolling down a little bit. Yeah, exactly, Jay. One hundred percent. See, Brian's asking, "What are we doing if the signal buy closes with for the ten minute?" Uh, we're not doing anything, bro. There's no entry there. So, um, I mean, unless there's an entry here on the ten minute, then there's that's what we're looking for. There's no entries right now. That's why we're looking at other things because there's just nothing there, right? So, if you're looking at the snipe entry, we would need a rejection off a of pivot and structure. There's not going to be a rejection of a pivot or structure anytime soon because the pivots are down here. So there's not going to be an entry here regardless uh, for the 10 minute. So there's nothing here on the 10 minute right now. Let me scroll over here real quick. Donnie said, I know we got knocked out of AJ, but is it a good time to enter for a sell? Um, after getting stopped out like that, I wouldn't enter, Donnie, because it's that's just revenge trading, right? If you, if you do that, you're just revenge trading. Um, I would just wait for the market to smooth out maybe like later on if not Asia session. And then from there, you can possibly take some better entries. I think right now I wouldn't take it. That would just be considered revenge trading. You know, you know what happens when you revenge trade. Uh, it doesn't end well. So I personally wouldn't because you can already see that there was market manipulation happening right here. And, you know, if that happened right there, odds are it's probably going to happen again. It's probably going to come back and stop people out a second time. And then it'll probably do the full move. So that's why I would just, I personally just wait for an actual, uh, you know, solid entry before you um, take it. Uh, Cash said, reading up on funding talent, looks like different setup in FTMO. Yeah, so I'm doing the uh, the 100K challenge for uh, for funding talent. The uh, I, the flex accounts kind of suck from what I heard. So I, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Yeah, exactly. So, so Donnie said, I asked because a bearish momentum indicator came up on the one hour. I could see that too. <clears throat> I can see it right here, but um, I personally wouldn't trade it because of how the market's moving right now. Also, because the Fed is going to be releasing their their minutes in a couple hours. So the last thing you want to do is enter a trade, and then this thing just ends up spiking up on you, right? <clears throat> and the reason why I could possibly see it spiking up is because the U.S. news could affect the JPY directly. Since the JPY is a safe haven currency, it moves opposite of the U.S. dollar. So if the U.S. news is good, you could probably expect the JPY to be weak. If the JPY is weak, you'll see the spike up. Because if you guys are familiar with how price moves, when price is going down, 
that means that the second currency is stronger than the first currency, vice versa when price is going up. That would mean that the first currency is stronger than the second currency. So if the JPY is weak and the news is good for US, then you could probably expect us to shoot up from here. So just keep that in mind, Donnie. I wouldn't take the trade right now. Uh, let me scroll up over here real quick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so Lorm said revenge trading the last two days didn't end well. Yeah, I don't recommend it at all. And Donnie said, uh, yeah, no problem. I'll wait so the market doesn't punish me. Yeah, exactly, Donnie. I would wait for a better confirmation before you take it. So what I would probably wait for is probably a break and retest. I wait for it to come down, let it retest, and then you can probably re-enter for a late entry if you really wanted to. Uh, so yeah, for the most part. All right, let me just scroll up real quick, see what else did I miss over here. Uh, I just want to knock out all these questions and I'll call it a day. I'm not going to be trading anymore for the day. It's already 8.30. I'm usually done trading by 8. So at this point, I'm not really uh, I'm not really inclined to take any more trades. I'm already up 1,200 for the day, so I'm not really too worried about profits for the day. Um, you know, 1,000 a day is pretty solid for the most part. I'm not really too worried about it. But if we do get a retracement here, so I'm looking for a possible retracement and a swing back up. If we get that, I'll take the trade. But if we don't, then I'm probably going to hold off. Definitely not taking trades here on the one minute, even though it's still pushing up. Uh, let me scroll down real quick. See if I missed anything else. Uh, short scene said, can we hop in a buy with market makers too? If they're going to stop retail traders, uh, now we are opposite of retail. Probably make some money. Yeah, exactly. No, definitely. Um, I would I would hop into some buys, short scene. Uh, right here, if we have the, the entry, I would take it. Uh, like I mentioned here on the three minute. So if we get a retracement and a buy signal, I'll take the buy on the three minute. The one minute, it's going to be risky, but you guys can take it if you want to. It's just, um, you know, like I mentioned, it's going to be risky because uh, it's getting close to the zone right here. It's only about 400 pips. So if you get the entry early, then yeah, you can take it and then lock in some profits. But um, I mean, realistically, I think it's going to be risky because of the news coming up at 11. So just keep in mind the Fed is speaking at 11 or they're releasing their their minutes at 11 and then they're going to have a press conference right after so expect a lot of like spikes in price around lunchtime all right let me see what else i need to cover over here all right i'll take a look at gold for neandro so i'll analyze gold for you i know yeah this is like one of your favorite assets neandro uh so looking over here at gold let's gold at xau all right so looking at gold right here i'll just analyze everything from scratch so that you guys can see how i analyze things from start to finish so here's a naked chart, right? There's nothing on the chart yet. The first thing I do is I analyze market uh, structure. So the first thing I do is I draw a market structure. To do that, I turn on the K2SR indicator right here. I have my zones on the chart, right? Next, I turn up the uh, rectangle tool right here. And then I go ahead and draw my zones on the chart. So let me just draw these zones real quick. So as you guys can see, uh, a lot of people, it takes like hours for people to draw market structure, right? If you guys have my indicator here, the K2SR indicator, it automatically plots it for you. So once you have this here, this is a, I mean, it's a huge game changer for a lot of people because a lot of people get stuck. Yeah, it's called, uh, it's called analysis paralysis, right? You guys analyze things and you keep changing things like every second because you don't know exactly where market structure is. But if you guys have this indicator here, you do it within a few seconds. So we turn that off there's perfect market structure, right? So looking at current price right now, you can see it's bullish. Reason for that is because price is currently moving up. Uh, I'll turn on the momentum indicator right here to find the bias. Our bias right here is technically a retracement sell, but if we get a buy signal, so this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for price to push above here and close above this structure right here with a buy signal. If, we, if it closes above here with a buy signal, then I'll expect it to push up right here. You can take that long position from this point and write it up to the next year for a total of about 222 pips in profit. Um, another thing that I'll look at to confirm this move here is I will turn on the K2 pivots to look at the trend for the, our time frame. So for the specific time frame right here, the trend is bullish, right? The reason for it being bullish is that price is above K2 pivots and it's pushing upwards, right? When we hear price was below the pivots and it's pushing downwards, this was a downtrend. Uh, if you want another confirmation, I'll turn on the K2 trend meter. The K2 trend meter right here shows you the overall trend on four different time frames. So right here, I have it set to the intraday settings at the three, 30 minute, one hour, two hour, and four hour. So I'm looking at what the trend is on four different time frames right here, right? 
So throughout the day, it looks pretty bullish to me. Um, lastly, you know, looking for here is that confirmation. So right here we have a resistance signal. We need a bullish signal like this right here, right? Because you can see that we have a bullish signal right here. I'll just replay this. So this is the same exact pattern that we're looking for over here, right? We have a bullish signal right here. We have ice breaking close past structure right here. If you were to take a, uh, you know, a long position right here. So this is kind of too big of a move, maybe like down here. So as far as you'd like to go, like 300 pips, right? Or yeah, 3000 or whatever this is. I don't trade gold, so I'm not sure if this is 300 or 3000 pips. I'm assuming it's 300 pips. If you were to take that trade right there and then you need to run, there you go, full TP, right? So we're pretty much looking for the same pattern right here. We're looking for this to break and close past the structure right here. Once it breaks and close past the structure, then you can take another buy. Right, that's pretty much what we're looking for right here. But until we get that, there's just no entry. So yeah, pretty much that's all I'm looking for right here, Neandro. I'm looking for a break and close past structure and I'm looking for the bullish confirmation to confirm that's gonna push up. Uh, however, you know, the overall trend right here is bullish. It's bullish on the overall time frame. It's also bullish on the current time frame. So that's what I'm looking for at this specific point. Um, yeah, so other than that, let me see what else we have here. If there's no other questions, I think we'll be calling it a day. Uh, let's see. Jumpy said, I've been trading for about a month <clears throat> now after trading for six months on demo, haven't had a profitable day yet. I'm learning and not going to give up because I know this can change my life. Uh, yeah, no, definitely Jumpy. I mean, if you stay on these live sessions, you guys, you can pretty much make profit just taking the trade that I take, especially the breakout entry. Um, I think you were here last time, Jumpy, when we were trading. Um, so, I mean, if you ever want to hop on these live sessions, you know, you're more than welcome. It's free and you can basically grow your account from there. So other than that, I think that's it for right now. Let's see, Enzo said, took another buy entry on DJ. Thanks, Sean. Uh, if you weren't here, I would have sold. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. So not, definitely nice work, Enzo. So yeah, Enzo, he, he caught the buy, right? So like I mentioned earlier, everything that I analyzed here for US 30 played out exactly how I just mentioned, right? If price reaches this point right here, like if it breaks above here, just like I marked up down here, this is where liquidity is sitting because this is where people's stop losses are. So if price ends up breaking above this area over here and it's about to, look at that, it's pushing up. If it breaks above that area right there, you're going to see a, a, a spike in price. See, look at that, boom, spike. There's a, the wick right there because people's stop losses are getting triggered. Um, you know, if you guys are here and you guys are learning, this is, uh, this is textbook right here. And this is stuff that I learned over time, right? I didn't just learn this like over like, in a day or so. I, I've been trading US 30 every day for the past three years. So I um, I know exactly how it moves because, you know, if, if you study something enough every day, it's like learning a new language. You know, you, you actually start to understand that language. Like each asset here is like its own language. Um, everything moves different. And I don't understand US 30 because this is all I mainly trade. Okay. So look in here at the retail traders, look at the number, right? So if you guys remember from the beginning, it was like at about 60%. I mentioned that it was like 60% down here, right? I mentioned that as price continues to reach these levels, these numbers right here are gonna decrease, right? So it went from 60 to like 59 to 58 to 57 to 56 to now 55. Uh, the reason for that's because all these retail traders right here are getting stopped out. You don't fall for those traps, guys. Like that's one of the main things that I learned over the years is to not fall for these traps here. Uh, basically they set up this trap this morning. They dropped price down here. So retail traders would enter that cell. As soon as they had enough retail traders, what happened? Full on reversal, right? It, it, this happens every day, guys. It's, it's nothing new. Uh, if you guys trade something far, like uh, consistent enough, you'll start to see these patterns. Uh, so check this out. Once price, if price breaks above here, so here's the next level. Uh, that's the level right there. Here's the next level right here. If price ends up getting past this area right here, you're gonna see some more volatility right there. It's gonna be liquidity pushing upwards. Um, Thirty-four. Yeah, I'm Joel. Joel said thirty-four thousand six hundred fifty is the next strong resistance. Uh, I think it broke right through your resistance, right? Let me see. Thirty-four thousand six fifty. Yeah, bro, your thing got screwed, man. 
I was telling you guys not to take those cells. You guys kept calling for cells, but I mean, you know, I already knew it was going to go up to this point. I had this marked up before it even happened. Um, and there's nothing wrong with your analysis, uh, Joel. You know, I'm just telling you that, you know, you shouldn't really go go against uh, go against fundamentals because fundamentals were up. Also, sentiment was way up. So the thing is, the technicals always fall, follow fundamentals, right? The fundamentals here were super green. And that's why I mentioned it was going to go up. And look what happened. It went straight up. Um, you know, what I would recommend, well, I mean, you can trade however you like. But what I recommend if you're, trade, if you're trying to trade the way I am, you know, fundamentals always comes first. It goes from fundamentals to, well, it's going to be a tie. It's like fundamentals are always first. And then it's going to be a tie between sentiment and technicals. Um, technicals is where you make your entry, but use the fundamentals and the sentiment to identify where to trade, right? If the fundamentals show a bullish move, I'm going to trade technicals for a bullish move. I'm not going to trade the opposite because the technicals always follow the fundamentals. And that's exactly what happened here. So, um, I mean, hopefully you didn't lose that much money, Joel, because I know you were calling sales like this entire morning and it just kept pushing up higher and higher because I kept mentioning that, you know, this is where liquidity was sitting. Price is currently right here and it's sitting at liquidity right now. If price ends up closing above this area, it's going to keep shooting up. So hopefully you're not like really deep in these cells that you keep calling because it's just going to keep going against you. In my perspective, this is, that's what I'm thinking. Um, but, you know, it's fine to have opposite. Um, there's no right or wrong way to trade, right? Um, what, what I'm saying is that this is just how I analyze it. But I'm really hoping you're not in any more cells at this point because I think it's going to keep pushing up higher. Um, and that's just me looking out for you, bro. I, I'm not trying to go against your analysis. I'm just looking out for you because I don't want to see you uh, lose any more profit off these cells that you keep entering into. So guys, I think that's it for today. Um, if you guys have any other questions, you know, feel free to reach out on Telegram or send me an email. I finally got through all my emails yesterday, guys. I was on the computer for like 12 hours yesterday. I didn't even sleep until like 2 a.m. I went through over 500 emails from the weekend. So I'm up to date with the emails, uh, but I still have a ton of emails to get through. So if you guys have any other um, you know, any other questions, uh, feel free to reach out, but give me at least a day or two for a turnaround for a response. And then I will try to get back to you guys as soon as possible. Um, all right, guys. So yeah, other than that, uh, hopefully you guys made some money today. If you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out. Uh, and if you guys have profits, go ahead and send them in the group and I'll add them to the, uh, the rest of the profits here. Nice. Sandra over here is up 19 euros. Nice work, Sandra. All right, perfect. So other than that, guys, uh, if you guys have questions, you know, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys here tomorrow for the next live session. So great profits today, and I'll see you guys later. Have a great